a cheat sheet, so I'm winning it. Um, the first uh, item on the agenda at 7 o'clock is an order of condition 270-0568 Lowell Street to Willow Street. Map 26, Lot 50, Mallet, Trail Improvement, Apajana River Trail Road. Can I drive so I can show some map and some photos? Sure thing. Okay. I can do it if you want there. You're dueling them guys. I'm Kim Honnerschlager. I'm the GIS Administrator, and I work with the Trails Committee. That's my capacity. Oops. Yeah, why don't you... There you are, those two. Uh, so when the Trails Committee met with you in February, you reviewed and gave your approval for a grant application that would build a, a trail from Hunt Street across the Abrajona River. Uh, to the trail we're looking at. Oh. That didn't get turned on? <laughs> um, uh, it's coming up. So the Trails Committee would like to revive a trail that, oh, um, that used to exist. You like my bad one? It stays together, man. Um, that's the wrong one. Excuse me. There we go. So down here, see my cursor, is the piece that was proposed as the, in the grant application. So Hunt Street is down off the bottom of the map, and the work that we would do if we get the grant, we won't know until this fall, um, builds a trail across the sewer easement and then across the Abrajona River. This piece from Lowell Street um, to Willow is an existing trail. Um, it's very well established here. This is actually paved. There's a meadow down here, and what I'll do is I'll walk you through the map, and then I'll just show you a few photos. Um, and it's, it's, the trail is pretty clear here from the Lowell Street side, and it's pretty clear down here as you approach the river. Um, pretty open upland here, a uh, real bramble patch in here, and so what the Trails Committee would like to do uh, is build about 45 feet of, of bog bridging in here. Um, if we have the funds, another 8 or 10 feet across a ditch here that's pretty near the river. <coughs> There are existing trail signs at Willow Street, not trail signs, but signs for the Millet Conservation Area at Willow Street and at Lowell Street. We could repaint those and then maybe add another sign that says Abrajona River Trail, maybe add a map, and then we think there should be a, um, a trail junction marker of some sort here. Um, and we'd like to do this under the Townwide Trails Permit. This is an existing trail, although it's hard to tell in some areas. Um, the only impacts really, you know, we'd be blazing trees and digging the ends of the boardwalk into the ground so there's not a big step up, and then building these two um, bog bridges there. So this is the sign at the Willow Street entrance. This is the paved trail that goes down towards the river, and that's the railroad there. So we're, we're looking south along the railroad. This abutter is really close. We could probably drive down there for the trail work, um, but we'd want to talk to that person, make sure they um, are not concerned about that. This is that paved road. We did some clearing there Saturday. It was a big tree down. Um, now this is the meadow in the wintertime, obviously. The Abrajona River is at the bottom of the meadow, and this is actually the river coming up along the railroad track, and then it goes onto the railroad track off the right-hand side of the, of the photo. Um, this is the center of the, of the area about where the junction would be for the trail that would go to the Abrajona River. That would just be a stub at this point. Uh, that's the dike. The section along the river is really right on the sewer easement, and it's essentially a dike. It's, it's raised up. So that's near the river, and that's where the trail would dead end at the river. And um, if we get the grant, grant would bridge the river and then continue off this direction um, to Hunt Street. That's looking back. You can see the little bit of a trail there. This again would be the dead end of the trail that we're proposing to rehabilitate. This is probably, I mean, you can see a trail there. It's probably more, more animals than people at this point. And this is from the Lowell Street side. So you can see the sewer easement's pretty clear there. Um, 
So we are right here now, looking back into the woods. So this wouldn't need much, just some blazing on the trees and then this other sign um, at the at Lowell Street, basically right across from the PNS variety. Um, we'd probably add a sign across here that says Average on a River Trail. Um, <clears throat> This is the mighty Aberjona. I don't think there's any uh, signage anywhere that tells people what that is, so even just having a trail sign there uh, will be an improvement in that respect. Um, this is a bog bridge that we built in Bear Meadow, so we'd be roughly doing that. That's the technique, the same old, same old. You've seen this before. We would either use 4x4 um, pressure-treated lumber or these pipes. Um, you know, it was probably three, four inches of mud and a little bit of standing water when we were out there uh, Saturday. Um, we could, this is the, the Evergreen Trail at Kylie Drive, this is on Charles Street, and it, it says to Kylie Drive on one side, it says Evergreen Trail on the other side. We could do something like that at the junction, you know, to Aberjona River this way, to Willow Street, to Lowell Street, um, just so you don't walk right by those blazes. And that would just be digging a hole with a, um, in upland actually, with a, a post hole digger or something where we're proposing that. Um, I think that's it. So I can put that map back up. Um, we would notify abutters at both ends of the trail and at least along this side, maybe along the north side of Willow Street as well, partly just for publicity. You know, we're going to be in there, but please try out the trail. Um, and it's, it's really pretty, especially here and by the river. This, you know, we were out there last weekend, no bugs, not too many trees, skunk cabbage is coming out. Um, it's it'd be a pleasant trail right now, and then if we do get to do the through trail, it, I think it would really be a nice uh, neighborhood connecting trail. Um, I don't know when we would do the work. We have to order supplies. That's going to completely wipe out our budget for this fiscal year. But I would check with, let Chuck know. and. Um, make sure we need to use the material cabin for cutting the materials and stuff. So Kim, I have some questions. <clears throat> I tried. <laughs> I, I went out to Hunt Street and tried walking. Okay. It didn't get very far. Uh -huh. um, that's really very wet back there. Um, I, I, is this, is this a request part of that? No. No, it's just up the... I think it's that one. So it's just from Lowell to Willow? It yeah. stops at the river, right? Okay. That's right. right. Plus, plus the so, bridge over the Aberjona, so if you get the grant. Yeah, so you walked in here from Hunt. Previously, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. I thought it was state. Um, so the, the grant application, if we get it, would the grant would, would build us from Hunt Street to the river and across the river. And then what we're proposing right now is this existing trail and this little stub to the river. And in the grant application, we said we were going to do this. Um, you know, well, it's it's worthwhile, I think, whether we get the grant or not. How many how many parking spaces? Um, is there are there any parking spaces at Wall Street and or Willow? Um, there's a little. You could get four to six cars on the wide shoulder right over Willow Street, right along Willow Street. This is um, water department land there. This little road, I don't think, I think it's fine for staging the project, but I, it's not good enough, I don't think, to, to suggest that the public parks down there. Um, there's no parking here, so one would have to park on Intervale Terrace. Um, there's a walk light here at, at Willow and Lowell. Um, there's a guardrail here. And it, it's not going to be terribly apparent there's a, a trail there, but we can make the sign more visible. And that's all we can do right there. Um, I just had a question, and I guess maybe maybe it's too early to ask this, depending on whether that grant comes through over the Aberjona, but that looks to be an area that probably floods quite a bit. I would, I would think, and I don't know if, I just asked the question, you know, the bridge over the Aberjona there, you know, how can it be secured? Yeah, so 
Uh, to survive we, we've, that. We've certainly thought about that. Interestingly, the, this is a real choke point up where the Aboriginal goes under Lowell Street, which is going to meter the water going in there. Right. So from what we can tell, this meadow doesn't seem to flood all that high. I don't have the photos with me, but they're staining on trees right at, actually, one of those photos I, it might show. Um, let's try that one. Okay, so yeah, you can't tell terribly well here, um, but there's staining on a couple of these trees that makes it look like the high water is roughly at the top of bank there. Um, so the, the grant application, we suggested that we would put down uh, 12 by 12 sleepers right on top of the bank, and then the, the bridge would be on top of that. So that would give us about 12 inches over the um, floodwaters. But, and then we would, we would secure it with vertical rebar drift pins they call it it's yeah. a it's a forest service plan the yeah. idea from that to it won't prevent it from lifting but that bridge is going to weigh about 2,000 pounds uh, so because it'll be two by twelves um, well, and with freeze and thaw though sometimes ice yeah. can do more damage to um, a bridge or to a dock than yeah than so I, I mean, we have some time so hopefully we will get out there and we've been out a couple times this spring and, and haven't seen anything that scared us yet, but uh, yeah, it's a good thought. Any questions from the commission members? Well, I think the last time we talked about this, there was a discussion about whether or not you're going to make the bridge three feet or four feet wide. And we changed the uh, the application to make the bog bridge four feet wide. Four feet yeah, wide. I think that, that was. I had the numbers. I could make that change quick. So between when we spoke to you that night and the next morning when the thing was sent out, uh, we jiggled the numbers and hopefully Just we did right. Passing traffic. Yeah, uh, uh, that's a good point. And and what we're proposing here is is four feet. We heard you. Do you have another bridge uh, in town that has such a span over a waterway? No. Have Not you thought built. about um, beaver activity in that area? Kind of taking advantage of that bridge. Is the bridge should be. Just straight across. Maybe it should be a little bit higher. Is that what things been talked about? Uh, we didn't. We know there what used to be beaver activity down here. There was, a, I think, a, a beaver dam and a beaver deceiver put down in here way, way back when. Um, we think we'd be, we'd be 12 inches above the, the top of bank. Um, but no, we hadn't talked about that. It might be something to look at when, you, when the grant comes in. Just when the, when the grant to comes in, I like that. That I've seen <laughs> yeah. many, when? many times. Uh, as uh, kind of the foundation to uh, a beaver hut. Okay. Oh. <laughs> what's the, may I ask, what is the span across the river we're going to put? Um, it's about 18 feet, so we're, we're talking 20 foot um, wide or long members and then ramps at both ends so it's not too steep. A little bouncy. Anything for that? Uh, it's, just, it's over, not designed over, yet, right? Over, we, you, we're, you we're, basic, we're basic. I've talked with the town engineer, and we have a, there's a forest service plan that says basically if you're using two by twelves, and they're going to be this long, you use this many of them. And so, in my com capacity as a total non-engineer, uh, we just we spec something and priced it, and that's what we put in the uh, grant application. But we'll definitely uh, talk with you guys in the. The town engineer when we get the grant. If you build the rail system adequately, it will hardly bounce. But if you don't, it will bounce a little bit. Like a suspension bridge. It's kind of like, yeah, like a, like a truck. Use a truck. It's mobile. But the engineer should know that, so. How many 2x12s on each side? Um, uh, double 2x12s on the outside, and then three inner single 2x12 stringers. So it's less than... I think it's less than uh, uh, 12 inches on center. What's the span? Uh, 12, uh, 20 feet. And with blocking, with decking. Uh, but they're I mean, all going to have to be doubled. We right? had to price something. No. I would, yeah, I we're open to suggestions if we do get the grant. So we have to double everything. Yeah. I mean, standard okay. sizes are only like 16 feet. You're going to have to do like a two 16s and a 10 or something like that. And, you know, bridge the gap. You can actually get up to 24 foot 2 by 12, so you have to special order them. I would go with three on each. That? Did you expect that? No, I don't think so. I would get three on, on the outer sides. Make sure they come in straight. 
Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> you guys are hired when we get that grant. Well, you know, you can use a parallel. Chuck also you. offered to carry oh, it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. wow. This Actually, that's not on the agenda tonight, right? It's not on the agenda. <laughs> you want me to design help? Yeah. 20 feet. Oh. All right. How, how is... Sure. Well, it seems like there's a lot of things that we're thought about. But when that grant comes in, Oh, we approved as the work so that you could apply for the grant. You did. Yeah, you we didn't. You didn't put your your, <laughs> your engineer's stamp on it. Uh, <laughs> One of us does. Well, I could, but it wouldn't be any good. Are there any comments from the community? So I, I apologize because I I guess I need some clarification here to that. This is. Only for what's brown on the. That's correct. Not the orange piece of the trail. Yeah, the correct. From correct. The, the, yeah, I was the, correct. The, if the grant comes in, you, you guys are going to come back and just have a conversation. Yes. When the, <laughs> a when, long when when the grant so comes in. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Regra regarding the brown parts, I, I'm in favor of this. I think it's. Um, sounds well put together and, and um, clear and another opportunity for people in the neighborhood to use that space recreationally and maybe do some birding and appreciate some of our town's resources so I agree I think it's a nice little circle another weird escape room for kids throwing snowballs at yeah. cars too you don't need a trail for that no. <laughs> you really don't I got pegged from somebody's house, like from their <laughs> second story window one day. So <laughs> it, 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 you don't need a trail. They were snowballs out of your house and your window. No, they did. It was funny. I slammed my foot on the brakes and I saw this window shut and I was like, all right. One of the things that I no. thought of after the last time I was going to get caught. I'm sorry. Get, one of the things the last time I thought of after the, our last meeting when we talked about this uh, was a sense as to how many kids go. Uh, uh, Austin Prep are going to be using this, you know, and I thought, wow, there could be kind of a lot of kids that would use that as the cut through. It would be great. I would really love yeah. that. I, I can't, I don't know. Yeah. Because that spur will go down to the river, and it's very healthy, and it's still a good, healthy cat nine tail marsh. We'd love to promote it to the uh, science departments at Austin yeah. Prep, and they could bring their kids there, and they could do some. Interesting hands-on yeah. studies and observations. It's not too far. Cool science team too. Yeah. It's also not that far from um, uh, Parker. Yeah. It's a, a walk from Parker too. So. Okay. Can I make a motion to approve this grant. Do we need to make a motion for this? Part of our we approved. We can just already approve. Uh, we can approve it's this project under the uh, existing, existing order. order. Okay. Trail. Okay. Make a motion to approve the project under the existing trail permit. Second. All those in favor. Okay. Thank you. But we had approved it under the grant in that one. No, they didn't. They weren't going to do this section with the grant. Oh, okay. So All right. they've gotten. They want to do a little bit more before right. that comes in. You're doing, the, you're doing the bridge out of your funds and the grant is for the work or vice versa? We would do this out of the, the Trails Committee annual budget of $1,000. So you only do half the bridge? Oh, okay. <laughs> the, it's going to end in the middle. No. Uh, we think we can do the 45 foot section. Um, we have odds and ends of pieces, and if need be, we wait till July 1st and hopefully town meeting will give us another $1,000, which will get us. Uh, Get us to the river. Cool. Wish you luck. <laughs> Thank you. The next item on the agenda at 710 is Bear Meadow Habitat Study Funding Discussion. This is where you shine. <laughs> so we, I don't remember when we were back before you uh, talking about the, the Bear Meadow and the Trails Committee, to, I guess to circle back, Trails Committee would like to see Bear Meadow, the meadows part of Bear Meadow, um, push back a little bit to some existing stone walls, but we felt that that should be part of a larger study. What, hab what habitat 
do we want there, what species are out there now, what are the historic extents of, the, of those meadows. Um, Mass Audubon had done a, a study, a um, conservation inventory for the town forest um, five years ago for $5,000, so I confidently said, you know, no sweat, we could, they ought to be able to do this for $3,000, and then I think you've seen the uh, proposal, so that it came in at $7,000. Nicely written. They sent us a um, an, an example of something that had been done in, in Dover that seemed sort of a larger property, but some of the same elements, an old farm field that they were, uh, you know, sort of bringing back to good habitat. Um, but it, it was quite expensive. So those are the elements. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, and Conservation Commission was very clear that you didn't have the money for it, uh, even if we were thinking it might be three thousand. So, um, and Bear Meadow is considerably small in the town forest. Uh, exactly, <laughs> and we were just asking, yeah, for the couple and a meadows. Lot, and a lot of it's <laughs> so wet you can't even get out, out near it. If you got uh, into it, it's, it's down by the Ipswich River. So. Yeah. So, uh, Trails Committee would still like to see those meadows enhanced because it's a, an unusual habitat. Rare, it's a habitat we don't have a lot of in Reading. Uh, there's some species there, for example, the American woodcock um, that, that used to breed there last couple years, doesn't look like it. Um, I guess I think if the Conservation Commission agrees that this is a worthwhile project, there are a couple of options. One would be to go back to uh, Mass Audubon Ecological Extension and say, all right, we only want these couple of the elements. And, and you know, in this plan, they've suggested they would do some trail mapping. Well, that's not necessary. So, you know, we could, we could probably whittle it back some, but uh, you'd have to whittle it back a lot, I think. Um, some of this, if you look at the other plan that they sent us, it kind of looks like you could take the invasive species management plan and write in bare meadow and scratch out, you know, whatever the other one was. And, uh, some of that looks like boilerplate. Um, one of the things I, I did, which is not typically like me, is I read the report for the town forest, I went through it, and I saw the, the kind of walkthrough schedule they had and the note taking they did, and there was a lot of assumption drawn from what must be there because of other habitats or what the general population of particular creatures are in Massachusetts. And there was, to me, it just seemed like there was no real substantiation of the inventory, but there was a lot of assumption drawn. Mm -hmm. Based on that report, I can't believe this would cost $7,000 if that cost five. That just, something just seems really out of whack with that. Uh, I, I think the words I used when I was talking with Chuck was wildly overpriced. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, well, I think, so. I think I, the first one was, but who am I? I had a question about this was I I tried to reach out to, to a contact that I have at Mass Audubon and just just went silent dark um, don't know why but uh, since this is a federally regulated and protected bird has there any been any outreach to the the federal government about this study and anything that they may they may have already done or any um, anything that they may do um, could, to could I defer to <coughs> Dave Williams, a member of the Trails Committee? And, uh, uh, the federal government actively manages for the American woodcock at national parks, national forests, at the uh, Moosehorn National Park in Maine. They do active cuttings, so they have staggering mm -hmm. amounts of succession that lend itself well to this bird. Um, here, there is some active management, but not specific to this bird, it's to birds and flowers in I'm general. I'm not talking about management, I'm talking about study. We know that the bird is under management and control of the federal government. Um, my uncle owns a farm in Bath, New Hampshire. There's no, uh, no uh, uh, conservation areas of uh, federally managed lands that are there, but they have done studies on my uncle's property for um, breeding pairs of woodcock in that area. Um, and I've actually seen and talked to the people that are from the federal government that do so. So I'm not really certain what they do in other areas, and I'm just wondering whether the federal government in their purview is studying and not, not just managing, but also studying um, the you know flight paths, the flight ways, and, and, and breeding areas of this bird, whether you've reached out to the federal government to see whether anything that has been done 
um, about that in this area that might be able to be drawn upon to look at bare metal. To answer your question, I don't know about a federal study. I know the bird is very well studied. It's very well known by the, the uh, state fish and game department. They know its habitat needs. They know its migration routes. Mm -hmm. um, but as to how it would be applicable to this particular situation, I really do not know. Okay. Have you uh, uh, reached out uh, by the same token to uh, Andrew uh, Vitz from the Mass uh, Fish and Div Division of Fisheries and Wildlife? He's the staff ornithologist. Correct. I, I report some of my sightings from the town forest of the endangered species we have there to him. I know him. Okay. Have you yeah. asked him about anything? I, I don't think to you're going to gonna get. I have not. Not I, specifically I bare metal. He may study, I you think know, large most geographic area. For us to look at, isn't so much the uh, behaviors of this bird, but the habitat needs. Right. And you know, we've got historical records showing that this bird do, did nest here. Now the meadow has decreased, and I think where we're coming from is to. We'd love to see restoration to bring the meadow back to some of its. Uh, ways it looked historically, not just for this bird, but also for other flora and fauna that would flourish there. Can I add to that? <clears throat> You're Dave? Yes. Yeah. Um, I remember our last conversation, I think I asked how many breeding pairs, you know, that this area could support, and it wasn't a whole lot. I think, I think you get at, at what, I, I think the heart of this study would be, or, or this uh, change the habitat is to provide you know something like a old field secession which it not only would you know benefit the woodcock if there are any there but I think you know ring neck pheasants and other species that we are seeing a, you know a loss wasn't it one pair was it just white because of small kind of I would think it would be one, one or two pair territorial there. yeah so it wasn't a you know huge population but there could be other species that that would benefit as well I did reach out um, last January or so to the um, Natural Heritage States. Yes, Natural Heritage yes. Endangered and, Species Program. <laughs> and I didn't think to bring it, but they sent me a letter that said there are no state listed species in this area. Um, and I, did, I didn't pursue it past that. Is there, is there any, have we ever done any of this previously? Uh, yeah. Bear Meadow? Any management of the meadow? Yeah. Uh, the Trails Committee has done a little bit of trying to. Um, get rid of the uh, Japanese knotweed at the entrance on Pearl Street, and it's all come back with vengeance. Um, we've also pulled some buck buckthorn in, um, let's see if I can get in, in the second meadow, the north meadow. Um, back when Fran Fink was here, we did a you know, couple days of pretty heavy work out there, and that we managed to, to er eradicate in a small area pretty well. But That's all I know of. But the, all right, so the woodcock, we think the woodcock habitat would be more in the meadow and on the border of the meadow? Um, right. So they do their mating display in the meadow, and they like wet woods, which is is the perfect description of this area down yep. here. And Dave, do they nest in the meadow or in no, the woods? In, in 10, 15 feet yeah. into the woods. Yeah. So, I mean, <coughs> sort of thing, if you were going to pay for something, you'd want something that you could reuse, right? So 15 years from now something that says this is how we do it again um, so I was thinking maybe if we've done it in the past we have something to lean on but it does seem like a lot for right um, us to cut some trees down you know other options what would be, be generic can I ask a question yeah. I'm, and I'm not trying to be rude is, is this leading up to something that you need from us so that you can go forward with this or how is this um, I think the bigger picture is that the tra cons trails committee would like to feels that it's conservation commission's responsibility to manage this land. We have um, come forward with some ideas. We thought maybe it would be within your budget, but I don't think you have one. Um, I don't know, what, 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 I'm not sure I'm answering your question. Um, Wasn't there a discussion about maintenance versus management? Because we know our budget, that's not in our purview to maintain the lands, correct? Um, well, you control the land. You control almost a thousand acres of land, and there's yeah, no one else managing. Do we have a discussion about this? About maintenance versus management? I think we did. Yeah. Was 
the job. What, what is it, the, the town DPW bush, bush hogs that once a year, is it? Yeah. Bush hogs? Because I know that... They mow the meadow. They don't really yeah. take down yeah. much of the woody stuff, except for the first year we did it, they had to kind of uh, get some of what had grown in. They had right. to cut that back. Right. I mean, one of the options is to just ask the DPW department to, to go in and restore the, the historic field yep. in Meadow. But we lose out on, um, you know, 15 years, the next 15 years of uh, understanding the study and being able to have people in the trails committee um, work on that area. So we, we could do a lot of stuff our own, on our own, using our own knowledge, but we wanted to get, um, we wanted to get some experts in on it to make sure we were going in the right direction. And I think, I'm not sure if this is when you wanted to bring this up or not, but I, I think what, when me and Kim were talking, um, the question came up is, you know, if we're supposed to take care of uh, these areas, um, where's the money for that? And Kim was under the impression that conservation had money to do that because they're supposed to uh, manage and maintain that natural habitat. But what I had told her is that you know the the budget that we're working with um, is used uh, throughout the year uh, for little projects, and then once a year, um, you know we would we would be giving a little bit of that uh, budget to the town. Um, and we just took that vote a couple months ago. Uh, it's, um, I don't know what the number was, 2500 bucks, something like that. But we really are only getting about three to $4,000 a year. More little comments, there, sorry. Is there anything, there is that tree replacement fund, and I think we had that discussion before too. <coughs> is there any way to use any of those funds? I mean, is that all used for? Well, that's what we said as I think, I think that's what it was based upon. I, I, I think you're going down a slippery slope. Um, it's also out of the conservation. Yeah, right. We can certainly talk to the warden, but it's not right. in our control. One of the things I see looking out my back, it's right in my backyard. But we, contrib we in a way, I know. vote and contribute to that, and I don't see why we shouldn't be able to request, make a request. Good. One of the things about this is that you know I know that as you look at that that map that's there, when you come in from the uh, Pearl Street parking lot area, immediately to the right of that, you see the edge of the meadow that's there, and and then that green line, and, and there's a there's a uh, a line that that basically goes to the right of that uh, green line and the yellow line that heads right out towards the Fairbanks Marsh. And, and that area that's in there, because I've been in there many, many times, is, is, is what I would consider prime woodcock habitat, um, you know, for breeding. However, when you look at what is readily adjacent to that, the Fairbanks Marsh and the Ipswich River area, um, there's far more uh, undisturbed habitat for breeding for woodcock up in that area, because woodcock are very, very sensitive to human inter, inter, uh uh, uh, intrusion into their breeding area. In the, in, the, in the bare metal conservation area is something that is utilized by a lot of people, especially a lot of people that have dogs. I mean, when I go to the bare metal, I actually, I, ha I, have, I bring my dogs with me. So um, it doesn't take much for, for even uh, a, a breeding pair of woodcock that might come in and consider that area in Bear Meadow to get flushed out a couple of times by dogs and they'll find some pl someplace else. They just don't stay. Uh, they're very sensitive to uh, human intrusion into their breeding area. So, you know, I'm not saying that it's impossible to get a breeding pair in there, but even if you made it 100% perfect for woodcock to come in and breed there, I'm not really certain whether they come in there because of the human and animal intrusion that's in that area. Now, that's one reason why I thought initially it would be a great idea to have an outside group come in with knowledge of, of trail use, yeah. uh, woodcock habitat, uh, you know, what sort of, just exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Um, one could manage that land so that there are, no, for example, no dogs off leash during breeding season, perhaps. And I was hoping that, you know, the, somebody like Mass Audubon would, would have some stature to make some suggestions along that line or whatever mm -hmm. else uh, made some. Are you suggesting that it's up in this 
um, the wetlands area that yes that yeah. is there's, the there's um, a lot of border area there that is that would be uh, pretty good uh, breeding habitat not only breeding habitat but feeding habitat as well uh, for woodcock because they uh, they feed down in that that uh, detritus layer that's underneath the understory of trees uh, um, for feeding, so there's, you know, some pretty significant feeding area there that's actually even much larger than that area that's within that um, swale area where would, uh, where uh, bare meadow is. Um, you could step back and say, all right, does the conservation commission is it? Are you interested in managing those meadows again because we don't have much meadow habitat for other species as well? Yeah, I. I I'd be, I, uh, I bats, like the fact that uh, uh, dra dragonflies, right. the spotted turtle we know is out there. I, I like the fact that that first area that was inside uh, on Pearl Street there that was really growing up uh, pretty thick with uh, with uh, blackberries and, and raspberries and and uh, other uh, small saplings and that that I'm sure at one time was part of the genuine meadow there and it just started to become overgrown and when they started to, to, to uh, um, bush hog that several years ago it actually uh, became more of a meadow and less of a kind of an overgrown you know coming into secondary growth field so I have a slide on your fees that you've probably seen before it's one that I helped Chuck build a while ago if you want to look at the fees I have a suggestion of how you could perhaps claw back some funds to use for property management, but it's entirely one, up one to you. The this other is a conversation that, Chuck and I have had. One of the other things I'll just throw out is and, and something we discussed the last meeting that we had here was, was um, you know, it's kind of, uh, you know, which twin gets the, the 10 cents. Uh, we discussed at length uh, the damages that occurred at the Matera cabin and what needed to be done there as far as repairs and then also uh, possibly um, um, removal and, and management of the overstory of the trees that are there. And to be honest with you, I, I mean, this is just me and it's, this certainly would have to go to the rest of the commission, but you know, my sense is that I think Matera Cabin would take precedence over the management of the, the, uh, the habitat at this point, at maybe this year. Uh, because of what needs to be done in the me immediate future at Matera. That's just my thought. I think it goes back to the larger question, I can't think. Is, uh, is yeah. the commission going to try to generate more funds to do some regular maintenance for broken boardwalks, uh, habitat studies, uh, tree thinning, removal of invasive species? Uh, All great ideas. <laughs> you know, it's just prioritize them where the, the, dollar, the few dollars are spent. Is that a raffle? What? Raffle. <coughs> Big sale. Okay. Bring some money. So Kim, you, you said you have some ideas? May I show you the, the slide that uh, I was quizzing Chuck and trying to understand your fees and he said, Kim, you worked on this slide for me, so uh, uh, so in fact, I did, and I'd forgotten all about it. Um, so for the audience as well, and the commission, I assume, has seen this. Uh, so if this is last year, um, the commission brought in and, and fees under the local bylaw, uh, uh, almost $40,000. And Chuck will correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that all goes back to the general fund. Um, and under the Wetlands of the State, Wetlands Protection Act, you brought in what's blue down here, just over $3,000. And then Chuck said just now that you recently had a, um, a vote to give back a piece of this blue stuff, but for the current year, presumably. Yep. Um, so you are bringing in uh, three to $5,000 in fees for the Wetlands Protection Act, which this commission, it's my understanding, can use goes into your revolving fund you can use for various purposes. Uh, my first suggestion would be don't give any of it back. Make the case that just as we maintain fields um, and buildings, uh, there is land to be managed and the Conservation Commission um, should have at least that much to allocate for your, your multiple responsibilities. This piece, what 
I, I don't know what would have to be done for you to claw a bit of that back. If it were possible, I'd say, and I would, I would stand up before the selectmen or anybody else if, and help you make this case if you went down this line, um, ask for 10% of this every year. Or ask for X, you know, three, five thousand dollars of that to build your pool so that you have a little bit of money that you can then manage out of your own revolving fund every year to manage your property or to repair structures, a Matera cabin, or to give a little bit to a scout who comes forward with an, uh, an Eagle Scout project as you've done in the past, or for a habitat study. Um, you know, my only standing here is as a staff member who does a lot, you know, I do my budgeting stuff in a completely different area. Um, but I, it's my sense that the selectmen would be receptive to the idea of managing property. And can I ask you a question on that? Yep. If, that would, if that were possible and if it was agreed to, and I don't know whether you know, Kim or Chuck, is it possible to actually have funds that would be in account and a set aside account, let's say, for maintenance, um, allocated and earmarked for certain projects, to have that actually roll over year to year, or would that have to be just collected and spent within a 12 month period? Because that would be kind of critical as to uh, yes. future so you planning. Have, you have a revolving fund, and a revolving fund is specifically set up as a a fund to take in certain defined. It, um, funds and to spend that on certain defined uses and it specifically rolls over. So just as we have water f uh, a revolving fund, we have a sewer revolving fund, Town Forest has a revolving fund. The idea is that unlike uh, an annual allocation from town meeting that you have to spend by the end of the fiscal year, revolving funds roll over, which is why under Fran Fink we think it built up a little higher probably because we had some really big um, industrial development. And so the, 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 your, um, your revolving fund checks had built up to maybe $15,000. Um, so you've, so could, you, could you set up another revolving fund? It would have to be town meeting that did that. But if you wanted to, you could go forward and say, we want two revolving funds. But I'm guessing it's not necessary. No, I'm and, just thinking that you that's might want to have the flexibility. Just kind of thinking ahead if we had, you know, projects, you know, such as the, the, the cross crossover that you were just talking about, um, you know, or this, this study of improving the habitat that there'd be a, a, a dollar figure um, allocated to it, and whether it was done this year, maybe done next year, that I'm just looking forward and looking ahead as to, that you'd have a reason to go to selectment, to go to town meeting, to actually allocate these funds. Because, you know, when you say that these funds went into the general fund, to have them actually come back to the Conservation Commission for these projects, you'd have to have a pretty good reason to have that passed by town meeting. The, the only other thing that I would add to that is, is what do we get now? I mean, right now, we, we just had the conversation about DPW getting in there. Uh, what do we get now that is essentially a maintenance that is not coming from any sort of conservation? And, and if we if we try to allocate money, are they going to now say... Send you a bill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so we may be hurting ourselves more by asking for that money than... Um, yeah, you're it comes, right. It comes back to the mandate of the commission and what we're trying to do. So as you think about what we've done over the last, say, five years, in the last five years, have we done any other study? Does that mean, well, no? it's not just study, though. It's, no, it's, I understand that. But So that's one piece of it. Have we, have we spent any money on maintenance other than at all? What about Matera Cabin? We're, yeah, we've we've spent money on different things for scouts and for, I guess you would consider it maintenance on Matera Cabin. Maintenance on Matera Cabin recently has been taken over by facilities and we've always been taken care of by the forestry department. Um, <clears throat> so all that work is done for us without, you know, without asking for money. Uh, they, all the conservation land when a tree looks like it's going to fall or does fall, they just go in and, and clean it up for us. So, um, <clears throat> I mean, that's one tree is going to be more than what we make right. on, the, on the state side of the funds. So, because I think what we're talking about is, you know, this is, we're talking about setting up, you know, I, I agree, I don't think we have to set up a separate revolving fund, but I think you're talking about setting up a whole different way of, of operating 
because we want to study and control the habitat for a couple of birds it, at, at Bear Meadow, if that's, sort of like, if that's really the only place we're talking about doing this, then I, I think we would probably look at it as that's a one-off and we would approach it as yes or no on that basis. I don't see a lot of other, in my time here over the last couple of years, I haven't seen any other sort of maintenance or study proposals like this that would suggest we need to really revamp our funding routines and all of that. So I would, I would tend to look at it more as what can we do about Bear Meadow? And I, and I do think that for every dollar that we say, you know, we need to preserve the habitat and all of that, we also just passed an override and there are a lot of people in town who oppose that with a legitimate point of view that it's expensive to run a town. And so, you know, I don't think it's as easy as saying what's our money. I mean, the town counts on that $3,000 every year. So I think there's two sides to that as well. Yeah, no, in all yeah. fairness, I would say is this is not the only town that <clears throat> that does that. Yeah. So yeah. to, to uh, request the offset no. is pretty typical. No. Uh, I, I think that if we did show that we, and, and I have said <clears throat> that the, the commission will go to a seminar uh -huh. and will spend about 800 to $1,200 a year, yeah. and they've allowed that so, much to stay in the account. That's really where we're at, so yeah, we're spending about 1000 to 1500 a year. No. So I think, I think if we were going to do this, we'd have to say we want to set aside money for this study and this habitat as opposed to making it bigger than that. Yeah, set aside over several, several amount of years until that gets large enough for the for a study to be performed. Um, I think um, kind of at an impasse, and I think this table is a little bit. Um, I think it, we need discussion. a little bit more thought put into this, a little bit more discussion, and, and but we appreciate the ideas. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it from there. I think we need to, you know, think about this a little bit more. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the trails Committee folks. Okay, um, we have our request for determination of applicability, 2018-316 Pineville Ave, Map 11, Lot 198. Uh, um, I did take it. A visit out there on uh, Monday, and I believe I, I saw that the uh, foundation was in, and there was a uh, stone apron on the left side, and um, you had the pipes going up and down, and then you had put in a claw filter and a silt fence, uh, as instructed by Chuck, and then, then it was the water was um, going over a, a hunk of plywood, and then it was draining down. Yeah. So that was my observation out in the field. Um, you just get a summary of the, the project? Yeah. So, so, you may know. Sure. <laughs> so, so Al's here. I just wanted to bring you up to date on what I observed. And so Al, you can say what you're, you're proposing on this project. Um, Al Couillard, I'm uh, just proposing I've uh, raised a single family house and I'm going to build a new one. And uh, the site plan is here. Uh, I guess, you know, Chuck and I walked the site and uh, found some wetlands on the abutting lot. So we, uh, we dressed it with silt fence and silt sock and I uh, applied for the RDA and mm -hmm. that's about it. So, uh, so I got a call from a neighbor and uh, went down there to, to check this out and um, it didn't come up on any GIS map and no one on Pineville or in the surrounding area had pulled a conservation permit. So I was pretty comfortable with this project um, before, that, uh, before that call came in. But when I did go out and check it out, and again, this thing came in in the wintertime and there was snow on top of this area. So as soon as the snow was gone, it was clear that there was a culvert there and there was a, a wet area. And then later on, just last week, um, 
a, a person that lives at the very end of the road who has a pool told me about the wetland that's kind of like just at the edge, edge of her property. So that was the, the second time I've heard about any any wetland area out out here. <clears throat> so I went out there and we marked the edge of the wetland and um, measured to where the foundation was dug and um, the foundation itself will probably be you know additional five feet away or you know maybe eight feet away but uh, to that point where this arrow is right here um, that was 70 plus or minus two feet away so that if that gives you some help I I mean I think it, it's it's far enough away that with <clears throat> installing some silt fence and you know just asking to be careful of the site um, and, and talking about what trees are coming down I thought it was okay for Al to continue uh, because of that distance and because of the fact that uh, it was missed in the first place and he had already set up the schedule and I mean I kind of know the results of when we have when we have a permit at about 70 feet away, there's really no, you know, there's no um, jeopardy to the wetland. <clears throat> there's just usually just conditions put on the uh, order. Of, so, anyways, Al's Al's uh, been attentive. I've given him a call. He was on the commission, so I did have his cell phone number. He's picked it up every time and got down within a few hours to do anything I've asked um, and sent these pictures to me as, as soon as things were put in. Um, this is the uh, three inch drain coming out of the, the uh, foundation and it's just spilling out on a piece of plywood and it'll run down into the wetland but all the suspended solids will uh, just be trapped within the vegetation. So nothing but clean water will get in there. What, what's, I'm sorry, what's coming out of the foundation? Is that just... Well, the, the foundation so, <clears throat> has a little bit of water uh, in it, and they have they have a pipe in there. I don't know, a corrugated sump pipe, pump. yeah, and a sump pump, and they're just pumping. So you're just pumping a sump pump out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So and, it, and it's actually protected. It's not just in the water. It's it's in like a, a like a pipe. Corrugated, corrugated tube. So it's not it's it's letting in less sediment, and then the sump pumps inside of it, and, and then it's doing some filtering there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then crushed stone inside that too. And, and then I we did, Becky, if you saw it, that <coughs> after a week or so that that's been running on the plywood, there's almost immeasurable uh, mm -hmm. silt right at the bottom of the plywood right there. Very, very little. I mean, the water looked pretty clean, but it was a, when it was first discovered, it was direct discharge into the storm drain. And I didn't want that to happen. Um, so I, I think that this project is, is pretty neat and tidy, except for two things, which is... Are you going to, you know, set up a perimeter drain? Is that going to be draining all the time? And where's that discharge going? And then, then there's a tree pretty close to where you excavated the. There's and a pine know tree close. To, I, I marked happens. this on the plan. Yeah. Uh, my my thought is now to to keep it. It makes a. In the tree right about there or something. It makes a pretty good buffer. It's closer to the the house. I, I, I thought I had a plan where I'd... Um, yeah, it's on the handout. Mark two trees? Uh, yeah, I'd mark a couple of trees on the handout. So I'm going to try and keep them. And if, if I can't, then you know, I'll, I'll come back and file the paperwork under the, uh, the act and pay my money and take them down. But, yeah. Um, but now I'm going to keep them. If, if I think they're going to go out, I'll come back. Those are the two so trees in the backyard. Yeah. Are they, <clears throat> how close are they? I mean, is this something? They're right that, there. That a, a the new homeowner, the first thing that is, they're, they're going to do, they're going to come in and yeah. they're going to be before us? Closest tree is going to be about eight feet from the foundation. They're right there. Yeah. And the roots, the eight foot root, you know, some, a lot of the roots have been cut. Yeah, yeah. they're just pine trees, about 10 inch diameter pine trees. And if, you, if you're worried about someone taking them down when I'm gone or anything like that, I'll, I'll take them down now. I don't care. There's only one, though, right? Is there two, two, there's two that would be in the buffer zone? I don't have that plan on this. Are you planning on doing any additional?
additional excavation, or what are you no, going to do with that? No, backyard? just the site plan that you see is the excavation that will be done. Okay. Um, the grading is almost not exact; it's a little off, but almost the same as when the uh, older property was there. So, very, very little grading. Okay. Um, any plantings going in the back? Any any? Uh, just loam and seed, loam and seed in the back. Probably, yeah. yeah, we'll stabilize it. We'll loam and seed it, and there'll probably be some plantings, but they'll be closer to the street and farther from the okay. source area. Any fencing? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to talk to the abutter and see how he feels about uh, a possible fence along that line, which would be in the wetlands. But that certainly could be kept up, you know, six or eight inches to accommodate any uh, migration of. Yeah. Do you want to add that to your? Request if it's a possibility. Um, yes. Yeah, I suppose I might could. As well. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well. And downspouts probably come out this backside, and you know I'm just trying to think of yeah. like well, different things um, that would be on the RDA. It's it's uh, long and narrow, so probably the the best thing to do would be to have a, a spout on the front left corner, which would drain onto Pine Vale and the rear right corner, which would be upland and drain and, and have quite a bit, you know, over 100 feet before it got to a resource area. What's the access out of the back? You're not going to have any sort of landing or...? Yeah, there's going to be um, a door on the right here, Mike. That's a family room. So, so steps, patio. Uh, uh, four by four is because uh, when you're on a pre-existing non-conforming, but you hit the setbacks per, per the building yeah. inspector's office, and a platform would be inside the setback. Any stairs would be inside the setback. So the the most he allows is a four by four, with okay. without a roof over it. So be minimal. Okay. And so I, I'm pool? Not, and I'm not, no, no pool. I just, uh, <laughs> just, I'm just thinking all the, no, no pool. all the add-ons. But, but the step, uh, depending on the grading, I, um, I might not, I might not even need a four by four. If I do, it's going to be a four by four in one step. I, I might be able to do it. Uh, just a grading and, and maybe a, a piece of, a couple piece of granite, something like that, instead of a deck, which I'd rather do. So this sounds like it's going to be pretty much. What's on the plan yeah, with no, yeah. <laughs> with no like after the fact? No, no, not that I. Large no. decks or no, no, no. Backyard patios no. or tree clearing or. No. Um, Fit in there pretty good. You were out there. The, those two trees. I mean, what's the? What do you think the chances are that a that they survive? And sorry, I didn't pick up on them. Okay. It's like, I wow. Did. I didn't. I did dip. You know, rough, rough shape. They were pretty seriously abridged by the snowfall. Yeah. Um, plus, they're kind of gangly weed trees, anyways. So. Yeah. Gangly weed trees. Is that a technical term? Yeah, it is. I think they're beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I when I went out there, I that's kind of one of the first things that caught my eye. I thought those would probably be going. So. Well, you know, if I could, I'd like to keep like. So that's a family room in the back of the house, and you know the property's out there. It's only a small lot. The yeah. All the lots are small, mostly on the street. So, uh, you know, if you're sitting in that family room, I'd I'd rather look at a pine tree eight or ten feet away than in the butter, in the yard or on the deck or whatever. Right. That's essentially you're looking at someone's backyard on the right and left side of that yeah. family room. So I was talking about the ones that are that are. Way behind the house. Oh yeah, no, those are those are staying. The staying? Yeah, no, the stay. I'm just gonna yeah. uh, clean up uh, in the back of to, to the wood line and okay. loom and see maybe 20 feet around the. I only have 16 feet on each side of the house, so I can't do loom and see 20 feet. Although I said that on the plan, I'm sorry, but it'll be 20 feet from the rear of the house. I don't have any other questions. Are there any questions from the community? And your name, sir? My name is Daryl Paraguya. I live at 24 Pineville Avenue. Yeah. So my question is, I guess, a little bit on the process. So I, I guess I just want to understand, like, this notice. Because like, it, it would, I, I know what, I mean, I heard what you just said. But I guess 
there wasn't a concert. I didn't get a notice like this before the house was raised. Should I have gotten a notice like that? And, and, and been invited to a conservation committee meeting about that because three trees were cut down, a house was raised. Like, I didn't, this was the first one I got of this, which is why I showed up. Right, and I think. Um, Want me to do that again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you, I'm sure you were listening, but I did say that <clears throat> it didn't show up on the GIS and it didn't show up. No one else in that area has got a conservation permit. So when we did the initial check, which happens a lot in this town, we just look at our internal documents, and we have a uh, we've purchased a flyover from MassDEP, which highlights most of the wetlands, but some are missed, and these ones were missed. So Al got his permit, and I signed off on it. Someone called, we went down there, and we're correcting the situation now. Not only that, when I looked at it, um, you know, I talked to Chuck, you know, look, I looked at the maps like you do, and I didn't see anything either. And, and I didn't go all the way over on my, the abutters property, but uh, when I looked at it, it was, it was overgrown. I didn't see it. And when Chuck called me and said, Rebecca went out there, and I went out there 10 minutes later, and is when we had that snow, but it had melted, and it had melted right in the, I'm like, oh my God, that looks, he, I went back to the county and said, yeah. Rebecca's right. It's it's went out there. I missed it. I'm well, sorry. If you go if you uh, if you go up Knollwood Street, you know the the street a little further to the south on, on 28. There's a big wet open area. Yeah. And it's like oh, and it's all draining from the summer summer app down yeah. into a culvert, and then you know so I, you know there's enough water to support a wetland back. There. So so what? What should, what should have happened if Chuck or I had picked up on it, you would have got that notice and you would have came to this meeting. I would have applied for a request for determination. They would have told me to put up a bill and so if it's just what's happening now is what would have happened in advance. It's just a little late. So, Chuck, just to, to clarify, generally what happens is this, this project went into the building department, mm -hmm. right, and they send it around and look for every department say, who else needs to... Sign. Yeah, sign. Everyone, who we else? all sign off on teardowns and building projects. So oh. we would sign off on everyone in town. So any house that's being torn down, every department has to sign off on. Whether or not it's near or con no. any conservation land. Oh, Just any, because any it's being torn down. Yeah, yeah. Regulated land. So, uh -huh. and then they go through the foundation permit and then the building permit. So. Yeah. It's just a mistake. Just a miss, yeah. Um, one other question. So, no. um, how many? So, I'm trying to think of like. Uh, so, the resident mentioned that there were some trees taken down. Um, do you think those trees were within the hundred feet? Were they? As you look at the four. property, were they to the right I of the I house? I think someone said four. But three, three, it three wasn't trees. Three, right? It was the pine tree that came down in the storm, and then two trees that came down when you dug up the foundation. Like I. I watched them, like, you know, like they took two trees out. I thought it was one. No, it was two. Like, we were counting. My kids like trees. Ah. <laughs> yeah. And the storm tree was after the roots were dug up. Yeah, the reason why that pine tree fell down is because you dug up the roots, That's and it fell down in the storm after you dug, dug, after you raised the house. No, it, was, um, it wasn't after raising the house I had dug. And you're right, I had dug, but I had um, it was from disconnected the, pipes, the, gas. the gas. That's what it was. And the water line. Dug up the roots and that. And you also used the shovel to cut down the side of the tree. Your name, I, I, my name's Linda McKenzie. I live at 7 Pineville, so I'm directly, diagonally across. Okay. So I can see most of it. It's, I, sorry, kind of being destroyed. So. So, so it sounds like two, three. Four. Three trees. Three trees. Three trees. Um, the, pine, the pine in the front, which got fell down to the storm, because yeah. I think because of the digging. And then two were cut down for the foundation. Of the digging, but I mean, I had a tree fall down, just missed my house during that storm too. A lot of trees came down. So, so, so three ones. trees. That doesn't include the two that are identified on the yes. this plan here. That's right. So that's just in in general, Al. Three trees. One pine from tree what fell, was originally two, there two, when the building trees, was there. Two trees what's were there today. Were, were dug out when I put the foundation in. And these guys can tell you where they were. I think they were. I, I don't know exactly. They were farther. They were more to the center of the foundation than to the. Do you do you know if that's within the hundred feet? I mean, it might be close to the limits of the hundred feet. I it think might it's be right on the border. So there's the two yeah, pine trees right there that he has on the plan. 
Yeah, and the, right. other, the other tree is here. Right. And then this one here? And then this pine tree here. So the pine, the the pine, pine trees tree might not be, be out of it. The in the front That's beyond the 100 feet, yeah. probably. Yeah. And it. It shows. So, so it sounds like that one tree so within the hundred feet. Is that what? There were two trees there. I don't know if it shows it, but yeah. yeah. There's, like, there's a pine in the front, right? And that, I think that would be out of the hundred. Yeah, yeah. Two trees that are still there. Still there, really close to the foundation. Off for a second, so I can figure out where this is going. I think that's your spot. From, from the, the wetland. wetland. From the wetland. From the wetland, yes. That's our jurisdictional area. Makes sense. That's about your 70 feet. Yeah, 70. So there's the house. So. So one tree. So it looks like that tree. There's one there. I thought, I thought this was about the feet. This. I thought the corner of this is about 70 feet. No. No, right from the right from the edge I got the very edge of it was about 70 feet. But this is the proposed, not the. Well, I went out there when the foundation was was there. Well, yeah, yeah the proposed. Yeah, so. The proposed. But so this that would have to extend much further back. back to back here, right? Back there, sure. Yes. It still incorporates that tree, whether it's where yeah, you're yeah. saying or where I'm, okay. where I'm saying. 70 feet is going to incorporate that get other tree. So and I think the new plan must be where this comes from right down. So do you want to replace that tree or contribute to the tree policy? I'll replace it. I think it's a good idea. I think Was it one tree or...? I know the one out in front was over 100 feet. Are it's you part, removing? It's probably two. I'll replace two. Okay. So there were two back there that were removed? Yes. Okay. So, so those trees have to be within the 100 foot, not, not in the front like you said you wanted to replant. So yeah. you're going to need something native in the back. Right. So two, and you're going to leave the pine trees alone for to see what happens, uh, unless he wants, to, unless you want to come back and. Well, why don't I take if those? I'm gonna, if I'm going to plant native within the hundred, why don't I take those pine trees down and I'll just put four um, within that uh, along the lot line, which puts us at about forty feet or fifty feet. I'll put some yeah. white ash or something. We chuck come up with something. You don't know it off the top of your head. <laughs> Didn't you work on the policy? <laughs> yeah, did you work on the? I think blueberry bushes. <laughs> You're mocking me. The trees are good. I think that's a good idea. You know, as Al said, it, the person probably the, they're going to want some buffer anyways. Yeah. But what's currently there is unlikely to work, and it's probably going to be something that. Somebody moves in, and, and I'll probably and I'll probably do that in lieu of a fence too, so you can take that fence off, Chuck. I'll I'll go. I'll stay within the hundred, but I'll go down that lot line a little bit towards the street, and space out uh, four nice trees, ten feet apart or so, and that sh that should be a nice buffer. Chuck, since we've got the aerial up, where is the? Uh, I know you've got the seventy foot line. How big is the the wetland? Does it show on this plan? I'm, I'm just seeing if you have an approximate idea. Doesn't show on the GIS. Yeah. 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 Um, and here's the, cho the topography, which can help out a little bit. I would, I would it could say be an that isolated wetland, but uh, you are looking I at. I mean, it's up to the applicant to there's, there's a really do a delineation. One that no one would. That Is no there? So you, you did this, Becky, this right? You said there was here. something more in this area here. Is it the green pond? Where's Knollwood? I... Yeah, that's the Knollwood pond. How about there? That's, I mean, it could extend or re be reduced in other areas. Here's a pond right here. And there's, there's this, there this is wet that, here. That is all, yeah. That was so this standing, is standing water, yeah. yeah. Right in here? Yes. 
area back there. Okay. So, how do, besides the fact that uh, we know you've got the best memory in the world. I don't know if you remember, but it was a few years ago, I've lived at Sun, Seven Pine Mill for a long time. It was a few years ago that they had to fill in part of that pond to put in that office building. There was a big argument about whether that water would end up at the end of Pineville Ave. So some of it had to be filled in. They filled in a pond? They, fill, they filled in the pond? 15 years ago? Yeah, it was a long time ago. But that was the wetland. Must have been tw like was it a sheet metal? Twenty five years ago? Yeah, I hope it was the bit pre frail so. No, the building, the building, you know the office building that's there on the corner of um, Knollwood and Main Street? This one. Big one. Big argument about whether that was gonna push no no, no. the other direction. Oh the other oh, the, the other way. If that water was if building there would push that water back into the end of Pine Bay Lab, because I knew people that lived at the end there and they were concerned that it was gonna cause flooding in their housing. So I know that they think you have to something. So, I guess, like you said, uh, besides a, a great memory, w what do we do to make sure this doesn't, properties back here don't go unnoticed in the, in the future? I think, I think this did it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this project up here on the corner was checked out by wetland scientists with a, where we have, um, it's only just construction fence up there now, but they're going to be doing yeah, something. Yeah, I saw that. Can yeah, so they they came in and, and oh, they they went out and they presented paperwork saying that the only only this edge, wherever the edge is proposed, probably here, is within the wetland buffer zone. So, so what's the address there? Two fifty eight. Yeah. Buffer zone. I think they're showing something like this area right here. Yeah, that's that big. Business real. Business real. Yeah. I can only draw a mental picture of where it is in town, but I can't look at the map. So they knew the wetland was there, but like I have to. They're showing that. Where that's there. I don't get lost in the shuffle. Far away from us. No. If, they, if, they, if it wasn't there when they built that building, the building's not built. It's there now. And it's, it's, it's not, not right built, yet. but it's been approved. Um, it's talking about the one I, right I don't know where this is, but they're, they're saying 100 feet is a big, basically about here. No, it's around the corner. It's called the wedding. They're not looking at what we identified. What's that? They're not looking at what we identified. Going back towards the square? Starbucks. No, so it's right around the square. No, back towards the square. The same 83 feet from the square. Where Friendly's used to be? Yes, yes. The corner where Friendly's used to be is the bank building. They're supposed to have looked at all this. The other side is that office building. And on, on, if you went up Nolan Road, is that big pond. Where the band sells um, Christmas trees. Where they used to sell Christmas trees. Right. No bridal shop. Yeah. On Main Street. It's very unique. Yeah. Can we sit up there? Yeah, I don't know. Because we can't do it. Can, before we get bogged down and other things that have been built, can we move this one forward? <laughs> I have one last question. Uh, the discharge from this perimeter drain, where is that going? Or is that something you've thought about yet? Um. Well, the first I heard that um, you didn't like it in the catch basin was a couple weeks ago. And you said, you, you should have known that. I don't think it ever came up when I was here, and I've, I haven't really done a discharge like that very often. But I was going to put it in the... Uh, no, 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 when you finish the house, is it going to have a Yeah, when I finish the house, yeah. Ryan says I can put it in the catch basin. So that's Ryan. So if Ryan's okay with that, then... Yeah, that's, that's what I'd like to do. It's not going in the line. Catch basin goes back to the wetland eventually, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. However, guess there's kind of. Cool. So, when did Ryan say this? And it's just, a, I've done it four or five times. No, have you asked him since we went yeah. out here? Because I talked to Ryan. Yeah, Ryan told me you went down and yelled at him. <laughs> <laughs> I said talked. <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears> hmm. <throat> in an animated way. But, I mean, if, it, I mean, if so it's okay with you guys, it's okay with him, is what I should say. Where's this that? This boy says it's okay to tie into that. Uh, so, Chuck, what do you recommend? 
What are you I, thinking? Is that, the I think that that water is, is it? it's a needed in a for the wetlands. In the I, I, think, I think the wetland is that's that water's from the wetland. You, you want it to be taken. Yeah, if it's you want it to put recharge. somewhere else. It's 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 going to be uh, it's not going to be good. The problem is it's going to. I mean, I don't I don't have an issue with putting it outside. If you got, I mean, I could have a piped out and have a you know a four by four by one foot thick stoned area and have a discharge go into that. Let it fill and overflow just like you're doing now. But the problem the problem is is the winter. It's going to freeze. So it's going to run 24 seven. No, that's what I'm saying. It's intermittent. But, uh, you know, when you're four feet, the foundation is, is almost seven and a half feet in the ground, and frost only goes down three or four feet on a really bad year. So when you're seven or eight feet in the ground, it's, it's not frozen. It's still moving. And the house itself has a foot of crushed stone under it, so water can move around in there. So if there's water under there in the basement in the winter that needs to be discharged, and it goes out and hits a chunk of ice at the end of the pipe because it's frozen, it's going to be a problem. That's why I would prefer to go into the catch basin if possible. How deep is it in the catch basin? Does the catch basin on that street go right back to that one? I don't know. You know our sub pumps go into the wetlands. Like my sub pump goes to the wetlands. Overland into the wetland? Under, underground. There's, underground. There's like a, a discharge pipe. It's heading down. It does. It, it goes um, right. It comes out right behind um, Bank of America, that catch basin. And discharges into a resource area. Not this resource area. Not that resource area. Is that our, it, so is that supposed to be it's our purview or is that engineering? Five. What's that? Is that our decision or engineering? Well, engineering is separate from us. We're, no, en we're, engineering yeah. doesn't care, but it, it, Brian's not going to let me, doesn't want me to do it if you guys say no. That's why I said if, if it's okay with this board, it's okay with him. If it's not okay with you, we'll have to come up with plan B. It seems to me if it goes into a catch main basin that goes into the wetland, I think that's fine. Can we say going in this wetland? Going into this wetland. So in, it, well, in essence, this is potentially deep water in that area. Well, how far away from the, I mean, how far away from that? They're all connected eventually, right? It's all underground water tables. And it prevents a problem from coming up somewhere else later. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, what's the depth of the discharge and the and the storm drain? And you know, you're saying since it's surface discharge in the wetland, it's going to freeze up. Well, the pipe's going to freeze. Pipes. pipes so, so the pump, some pump's not going to be able to pump the water out of the basement. And it's too late to have a buried pipe from that sump pump out. No, too. well, it's there's not a gravity feed. I'm I'm not sure exactly where he lives, but he he may have a gravity feed. Right. From Right. The foundation into a resource area, which if I had right. gravity feed, that would that would be fine. Right. I, I would have a pipe water. coming from my foundation, coming up out of the ground, going through four feet of frost, and then discharging into, you know, some sort of. Um, Wouldn't it be great if you had a green thumb sort of resident who wanted a you know, a garden water tank in their backyard? <laughs> It'd be great in the summer, but they wouldn't want the wet basement well, in the winter when it freezes. Yeah. So you, you can't make it the discharge. So it's it's not going to flow downhill. Is that what you're saying? Because yes. I don't see how. So it's it's going to be pumped out of the basement, and it's going to go over an elbow, and what and then what's what doesn't clear the elbow is going to go back down into the into the sump. Whatever's in the tube is going to clear out. So how come that doesn't work? The tube from the house to the to the wetland is just going to empty. Well, it goes uphill to the wetland. <coughs> right. It, it doesn't look different. It's, if, it's, if it's just out of the back of the house to the side of the house, it's downhill. All the wetlands are always lower than Always the, down. Yeah, it's always down. Going to this top map? It goes from 94 feet to 98 feet. Well, directly in back of the house is higher to the one side is lower. It's actually the wetlands in the neighbor's yard. Um, well, as you look at the drawings on the, the bottom left hand corner? Right. Yes, yeah, towards the 94. Right. You know, I'm, I'm trying to think of an easy solution. <clears throat> um, you know, I'm just going to throw out solutions that come to mind, although, you know, um, you know, 
pump it out to a, a underground infiltration, you know, or some you know some sort of dry well in the backyard that's off the back corner. Um, I mean, you could hook it up to the storm drain. The only thing about that, f from my standpoint, is um, um, storm drains do mix with road runoff, you know, and so it, it would be taking clean water and adding it to dirtier water to some degree, which would, help. Which would increase the volume of, and dilute the dirty water, but, um, you know, uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm not sure what the what the solution is that's going to work. If if you want to come back, I hope. Oh, can we I know uh, going into the catch basin works? Yeah, it does. Can we uh, just kind of leave it open no. one one way or the other, and I'll talk to Ryan again. I think I think we close. Yeah. You okay with that? Well, I'll talk. To, I'll talk to Ryan. We'll talk. To, you and me. We'll talk to Ryan. And figure out what's the best way to do this. Sure. Or, or something we can agree on. It seems unusual to me that Ryan would approve a actual, direct you know, connection. direct connection. Um, I mean, I've seen plenty of people in town, uh, you know, do uh, um, hoses from their basement down their driveway into the storm drain. I'm sure there's some pump. You know, I've seen, I've seen a lot of those, but I haven't. I have. This is the first time I've heard so, of engineering so approving that sort of thing. The reason those is because uh, for a couple of reasons. One, that they may not have access to a catch basin on their property. And, right. And two, if they do, it's an expense. It's, I mean, it's, right. you know, it's, right. Uh, right. Two it's the easier three, thing. Maybe four, depending on what the situation is. It's thousands of dollars, two, three thousand dollars to to put the system in that I'm talking about putting in. So a lot of people in a older home just you know, gonna, don't want to absorb that expense. So they run a, a hose out the basement window. Well, there's no way you can re regrade back there. Make some kind of a trench. Why would I? I mean, yeah, there's a way. Very a trench. I don't know why I'd some want to. Kind of a, well, Very otherwise, you're, gonna, you're, you're talking about pumping out to the storm drain, right? I would like to put an underground pipe into the storm drain from the new foundation. That storm drain is that, the, I don't know if these guys know, I hope I'm not going to make anybody mad. That big tree in front is coming down, you know that, right? I saw the notice. I didn't know if the meeting had happened yet. The meeting had happened, and, and it's coming down. But um, when that tree comes down, that tree is engulfed around that catch basin, and the catch basin is brick and mortar. So, I mean, I'm going to have to put a new catch basin or oh. redo that catch basin anyway. So, I mean, I'm going to be doing a lot of work in that area. It just make a lot of sense to go from the foundation into that, uh, that catch basin. What kind of catch basin is that? Is that deep sump? Yeah, it's a deep sump. Four foot? In water. Four foot sump? What? You think it's four foot sump? I think. I'm not 100%, but I think. All right, so we have options. I mean, you know, it's a four foot sump. It's going to catch some sediment. So if you're willing to do that, let's just talk to Ryan. I know it's, you know, what we can come up with. Just ask the public. I think the commission is, doesn't really care. Okay. You only let me care. All right. Oh, have any more comments? Yes, ma'am. I'm Jen Queen of the Old Well, kind of well out. So I guess, you know, you mentioned 20 feet of the... Oh, room there. and seat, but I noticed it's two feet, the one that you sent to, to the neighbors. So it's maybe 16 feet now. Well, one guest side Could Could I see the letter, please? Because I can't read that well. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, we didn't, get, we didn't get a copy of that. Oh, okay. So it says two, it meant, should be 20. Yeah, someone called and I did uh, tell them that. that All right, it does say two. Back, it does say two, and it should be twenty. So, and that'll be part of the within the RDA. RDA. And it looks like it's going to be that'll sixteen be part now. Of the description yeah. that we include. Is it going to be twenty or sixteen? It's going to be sixteen, as far as you guys are concerned. On your side, on the other side, we're a lot of the hundred. Um, Jen's worried about there's a, a common driveway, a uh, uh, paper street there. And I, uh, I put the stone filter on and stuff like that. So I was just telling her that I'm going to restore that back to its original form, which is just grass. Okay. Does 
that out? So not being an expert on water tables, I assume you plan and give us confidence that we're not going to have any flooding in our own properties as a result of this. Correct? Right. You have flooding now. I can. You have flooding yes. now? Okay. There, I think the entire neighborhood has some level of uh, water issues. And, you know, this was something that we brought up at one was proposed, and now this is yet another building in the same general area. Um, and I think, kind of speaking to what Daryl was pointing out, this was like our first opportunity to have a conversation with anyone around what was happening. So we're kind of jumping into this late. I mean, Al has been communicating about things. I just want to know that. Um, we don't know what the process is and, and how some of this is supposed to be going. I can speak for myself. I just want to know that our properties are not going to take on additional water as a result of whatever the solution is to um, managing the was there a sump? Was there a sump pump in the old house? The old house was on a slab. The old house was on a slab. Okay. It was old military housing. With it's a, kind of, it's with kind a of shallower. It wasn't real. I shouldn't say it wasn't a slab. It's kind of interesting. They they was on pilings, and then they had I beams going all around the outside perimeter. It ran the floor joists as welded in. Interesting. The I beams. And I've never seen anything like it before. It's pretty weird. Like steel I beams. Yeah. Rock solid. Oh. How, how deep? How deep is the slab? Um, the pilings. I don't. We dug them up. I think they were they were about three feet. Three feet. So you're going a little deeper in the foundation. Yeah, I'm going a little deeper. Yeah. So you have a perimeter drain. It's going to suck all the water out from from under the house. Yes. Send it out into the storm drain. Yes. Rather than leaving it in in, in the ground. Yes. So in theory, you should have less water in the ground. Than you have. So he's going to be dewatering the area. Yeah, it hasn't been decided yeah. yet. We're, which we're, we're, we're still well, figuring out which yeah. way. Okay. Now but, yeah. We're going to go. It does look like it's going to go in the storm drain, but. Um, <laughs> I just want to know, do you know which, uh, I mean, I thought that the storm drain, the, the discharge point from the storm drain that's in back of that other house is, it exits there, it doesn't enter there. Do you know? Say that again? Which, which direction is the water flowing from that culvert that's in the back? That's from my house. One of my house, it goes out. It goes out into the swamp. Yeah. Yeah, so even if it discharged there, it's not going to be, it's not going to be an issue because it's going away from so it is the same. I think that's, that's where your <coughs> sump is discharging? Yeah, or culvert. You have an easement on your property for the drain? I think so, yeah. Okay, so that's got to be where it's going. It's going out into that area. I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I, 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 you know, I have to tell you, I think the, the modern, these modern buildings, they're, they, they're not adding any, you know, flood issues to, I mean, I haven't seen it ever. I guess there's one or two out there, so I, I, I guess those are the ones I haven't seen. I'm, I haven't seen anyone here build something in Reading, and then all of a sudden someone's, you know, flooded next door. Uh, that usually happens when you change the topography of the ground, so the runoff comes into your house, overland flow, unexpected. But but you know the or someone accidentally the blocks a pipe or is, uh, is watching again yeah, blocking or a stream pipe, something or that's something. obvious. But these foundations with their perimeter drains and just knowing where to put things, it, it, it's usually a benefit to any kind of flooding. Um, water's going to be moving, he's going to be taking it out of the ground, you know, whatever the rate is, and then discharging it into the storm, into the storm drain or the wetland. You know, hopefully it's the wetland, and um, it's just going to run down. Yeah. Last question, does your sump pump run all year? Yeah. Does it run more during the spring and summer and less in the winter? Yeah. That's my belief. Mine doesn't, mine doesn't run for about six months of the year. It might come on once or twice, but it's about six months where it does run. I just don't know if maybe... It's like at the bottom of it. I'm at the bottom of, like, the topography, so, like, particularly where I am, like, they're, yeah. like, for our neighborhood. Like, you know that when you walk your dog, you go up the hill starting at my house. Sure. Motion. There's a lot here. 
I make a motion for a negative determination with um, pending, um, pending Chuck, Ryan, and Al uh, get together uh, and discuss where that discharge will actually occur. Second. Oh, oh. We need some trees too. And and, <coughs> and the replacement the replacement right. of four trees. Four trees. Four trees. In the buffer zone. Within the buffer zone. Right. I'll second that. I have a question. Did, did I misunderstand you or just to allude to the fact that you didn't have a problem with him putting the discharge pump into the storm drain? I want him, Ryan, and, no, and Al no, to I actually didn't have this conversation. I would like to yeah. see, I'm still hoping it'll go into the wetland. All right. All right. I prefer. And, and, and if everything's running away from this property, I don't see why it can't. So, okay. I'm going to let Ryan, you know, I'm just, if I Ryan has, why, if Ryan, Ryan has a reason why, then yeah, I don't have a problem. All those in favor? Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I did. Oh, did you want your, your letter back? I have a note on the back um, of it. Al? Did you tell me who Ryan is? Yes. Ryan. He's the town engineer. Personal. Personal? Yeah, Ryan Personal. Uh, personal. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, we have a notice of intent for 95 Walkers Brook Drive, map 13, lot 2, Terraco, and... Uh, it's like the street, you know? Health hearing is um, now opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Mass Protection <coughs> Act, Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Applicant will present the proposal. The commission will receive reports, um, which we've got uh, anything from technical advisors of the town departments. We'll address questions and comments to the applicant, and then the public is given the opportunity to ask questions. And when um, the, the public does respond or ask, uh, please give your name and the response. Yeah. Um, hopefully, everybody signed in the attendance sheet. Um, this time, I'd like to just introduce members of the television commission, starting on my right. All right, I'm an Bob Hayes. David Panette. Mary Curtis. Rebecca Longley, Chair. Anika Scanlon, Vice Chair. Michael Flint. Chuck Trani, Conservation Administrator. Good evening. I feel like I need to do a jumping jack and just wake myself up. It's okay. Get close to my bedtime. Um, my name is Teal Bernstein. I represent the Perico Group. I am the Organizational Development Manager for the practice. Um, I just wanted to give a quick little synopsis of who we are. Um, Perico was founded by um, a gentleman named Dr. Gerald Kramer. He was the first periodontal resident to graduate from Boston University's School of Dental Medicine. Um, the six partners of Perico that have followed him um, actually all still work for the practice today. We are the longest running practice, periodontal practice in the country. Uh, we have an international presence um, with the speaking engagements done by our doctors. We also invite in um, folks from everywhere from Japan to Brazil to Germany who come in and basically learn from our docs to carry their techniques back to their home countries. Uh, we specialize in periodontics, dental implant surgery, and adult orthodontics. I think that last one. Uh, we have three locations, one in Swampscott, which we have been in since 1965, um, a Boston office, which we've been in since 2009, and we are super excited to be moving to Reading in 2018. Um, if you have any questions, I can help answer, but I am going to turn it over to the professionals. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Andrea Kendall. I'm with LEC Environmental Consultants, and with me tonight is the project engineer, Michael Lamb, from the Moore and Cameron Group. My job is to um, introduce the and describe the project site, the wetland resource areas, and Michael's going to describe in detail the proposed work. So. We'll go from here. Um, and this is my first time using this little laser pointer here. So this is about a 1.2 acre L-shaped parcel. It's located on the south side of Walker Brook Drive, which is right here. 
Um, the town of Reading has their parcel to the south. Uh, again, town of Reading parcel extends to the, to the east. And then we're right at the, the Wakefield town um, boundary. And this is a parcel owned by the Bo um, Boston Gas Company. The site is comprised of an existing one-story brick building, about 6,000 square feet office building currently. Um, it has an older, dilapidated uh, parking lot in the rear, and it has cat four catch basins that collect uh, runoff and direct it to uh, through an underground culvert to the wetland system located in the rear here. Uh, there are some uh, access to the site. Is, it will be made through an existing right-of-way through the Shell gas station, Dunkin' Donuts drive through parcel. And then there's a common egress to exit the site um, shared by the gas station and then the office building, which is located over here. There is a 30-inch uh, sewer easement and landscape easement here and the sewer line extends um, off site to the south. There's also a 20 foot wide easement that uh, conveys the water main. There, this is an existing gravel road that the town of Reading gains access through the site to get to their um, infrastructure there. Um, there are there, off site in terms of the wetland resource areas, there's Walker Brook to the west, and then the 200-foot riverfront area was um, estimated based on the aerial signature, uh, the mean annual high water, and the 200-foot riverfront area is depicted in this blue line here. So it's a very small piece, triangle piece here. There are wetlands that border off-site a little bit on, onto the property. That's the green line here. And then the 100-foot buffer zone extends on site and is represented by this faint yellow line here. So not all the site is, is within wetland. The 100-year floodplain, which is equivalent to um, elevation 85, that is on site and it, it encompasses most of the parking lot. Um, maybe it's this blue line. That's right. It's, I think it's that blue line. So much of the property is within the um, is within <coughs> land subject to flooding. Um, this currently there are some encroachments from the existing edge of pavement here and a very tiny bit here that encroaches onto the town of Reading property and then a very small bit onto Boston Gas Company. There's also a, a metal guardrail that extends onto Boston Gas Company. Are there any questions on existing conditions as we could you just show the, the wetland line again? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all in green. So this is the oh, wetland okay. line. OK, got it. Here. Thank you. So the 100 foot line, I, I get. The other line, I, and I think that it's just off the screen here. That's the 25 or the 35 foot? So that's the 25 foot offset, which is characterized currently as previously disturbed. There is some. Uh, natural vegetation and here um, oak uh, grasses uh, in the upland and then otherwise the 25 foot buffer zone is comprised of lawn or parking area. Thank you. Yeah, I did a site visit. I went in the wrong way. <laughs> oh, <I> see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice uh, traffic pattern. We do have some site photos. If anybody didn't have an opportunity to go to, we can bring those uh, up just yeah, to get I'd like you a to feeling. I'd like to ask a few questions. Sure. Um, so the, um, the wetland flags, uh, they're easy to see, and uh, the wetlands characterized by Frank Mighty's mostly. There are some red maples. There's uh, some alders. Actually, I think it was um, <coughs> There's dogwood. Dogwood, yeah. red dogwood, red, red, red dogwood. 
Um, and then there's a lot of sweet pepper bush, cluster olifolia, right. along the back and along the side. The back, that yeah, that you guys put your flags in the middle of the shrubs. Well, why why did you do well, that? Well, sweet pepper bush is a facultative plant. So it means it can grow 50% of the time in the wetland, 50% of the time in the upland. It doesn't... Um, yeah, I understand that. But at some point, and I kind of agreed with some of the, the flags along towards the, mm, the, uh, that area, but it, kind of in the middle, I, I was like questioning because it was a little flatter there. I could understand, I could see the bank going yeah. up, and, and I kind of agreed with it. The other line, I couldn't find. Oh. Yeah, I couldn't find those flags. That is because it's off-site, and we didn't have permission to delineate those wetlands. Then so we, put them on the flag? we relied on um, a, a wetland delineation that was done in support of the shell. Um, and what year was that done? Five years ago. So in terms of how it impacts um, this, this. You know, it's all within buffer zone. It doesn't have any material difference. We're moving uh, the impervious surface away from the pro from the wetland line. So, to gain permission from Boston Gas Company is an onerous um, process. Uh, um. So, you know, I, speaking about that line. So we don't know how that other site or how that line. Was that a Boston gas line, or was that from the, sh uh, was it the Shell station? That was the Shell station. So they trespassed or what have you. I don't, that's just not our policy. But you're accepting that. that as if someone actually did it, you don't, but you don't know that, right? Um, there were wetland flag numbers on that old plan. I don't, I yeah. might have it with us. So, so, uh, RDA. so it was actually flagged in the field? Yeah. Is that, that okay. Time. No, that's yeah. what I was trying to figure out. Chuck, do you know if that was ever filed with the... Uh... Well, I, I remember that um, they came in and there was some work done there, but I, I didn't know it was five years ago. I thought it was a year ago. The most recent work was done five years ago. That was that, uh, yeah. Um, the drive-through may have been a little bit before. That was the five years ago. Yeah. Who did the work? Was it... Was it um, the permitting? Was it Williams' for it was, Yeah, they had done the permitting for that time through and, uh, and some of the reconfiguration of the park. I can't use, remember who they used for the wetland. All right. All right. So, I mean, just to answer your question, um, we do look at soils when we're delineating. So, just because something topographically is a little bit lower than, than that, that slope, um, we're looking at the vegetation, the soils, and combination. So I can't um, speak to also, exactly a spot that you're referring to, but that's just the general approach. Um, Do you have pro probes that you did soils out there? Or yeah, I didn't uh, see that. I didn't see, you did mention DEP um, sheets. I did not do data forms on, on this site. Because it's such a narrow band of, of upland, we did take in our report, we specify and describe the, the upland soils, we describe the wetland soils, we characterize the vegetation in both upland and wetland areas. So in this kind of circumstance, to get an accurate uh, data plot where you have to do a certain radius for understory and, and overstory, it, it just doesn't really lend itself to this. Even if the, the wetland line, for whatever, you know, it's adjusted here or there, the overall intent and scope of this work is to pull the pavement away from, from this area. Before we get on to, before we go on further, um, I did also notice there's a, um, a pile of dirt Yes, that is construction, interior construction related, and it will be removed by the construction crews. Yeah, because I noticed there wasn't anything that would, if there was a heavy rain, there wasn't anything pre preventing that from, um, you know, going into the wetland adjacent to it. So. It's on the pavement, which 
Yeah, every, everything on the pavement would be in toward, toward into the catch basin, so it wouldn't have a, it wouldn't flow toward the, toward the wetland. Right? Well, well it goes into the catch basin and out to the wetland. This is the back side of the pile up against the curbing? There's no curbing on that side of the pavement. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was pretty much on the edge, though, right? That, that mm -hmm. just turns right into grass. Right? Kind of, yeah. yeah. And erosion control is our part of the they just, I, they, get into that. I think just at the site block, it, just, it looked like maybe, you know, like a straw waddle or something could have been between <coughs> that edge, the end of the pavement, and the pile of dirt. I, mean, I can have them correct that tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks. That's, that's all yeah. they're saying, is it something? Yeah, it's no problem. Yeah, we have an interior building permit. You're not, not going to tear down and build a building. Oh, goodness, no. Oh, okay. just, no, we, we just, just, we just finished curious. wiring. The electrical inspector is coming no. tomorrow. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't. No, actually, the building, the building was perfect for our purposes. Um, like, you know, having a one-story layout where we can incorporate both business functions and clinical functions was pivotal to our decision to purchase the property. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right, so just for the record here, my name is Mike Laham with the Warren Cameron Group, uh, civil engineer, project manager there. Um, and I'll go through the plans, and I do have, before I start, I'm going to just distribute these. So these are just some minor revisions here that are represented up on the screen as well. And you might notice the main difference is in the top right, um, the main difference with what the plans that were previously submitted show and the one up there is the alignment of the parking area up there where we have parking spaces in the top right and now we've shifted that shifted those spaces off to the left of the property so kind of point that out there were a couple parking spaces right here so this would have come in and we would have had parking here and one of one of the things that had, had come up in our discussions with the town was to, to shift those over to this area here. So that's that's the that's really the, the substantive change on the plans that, that you have and I can um, get into that uh, anything else as we go here. So so at our DRT meeting um, where the parking lot parking spots were added so over by that access to the uh, sewer easement the, the town felt like they were going to access that and to have it um, have no parking there to drive over to get to the, uh, the sewer. it didn't make any sense so we we asked for this change and it actually creates more of a snow storage area on on the other side so so how is that going to happen in in the upper left corner of the lot is there going to be no curbing there there's actually no curb around right. the yeah, whole property. and no and also no they're not proposing the to uh, okay. maybe you can tell them that you guys aren't, they're not proposing to redo the parking lot. They're just going to mill. We, we had hoped to do that. Now you're changing it? The asphalt company came out and they assessed the condition of the asphalt and they did not think that it would be successfully milled, that they would come out and mill it and then advising us to take it up anyway. So we did change the direction on that just to, to be as um, ahead of the curve as possible. But we took the, the company's advice that the condition was not millable. Not successfully millable. Clarify that. So you have to excavate it. Yep. To approximately to what depth? Just the surface, just the, the pavement, three inches probably. Not the base layer or anything. No, not base layer. Okay. And I think from Monday's meeting, um, the engineer at that meeting said that the grading would not change at all on the property. Right. That was that's that's the intent. And is the plan to? The existing storm drains and culvert that is yes, there. and I can get into that. I'm, what I'll do here is just is kind of walk through the plan set so you guys can get a sense here. So this is the existing conditions plan, and you can see here that the, the edge of pavement actually is it's, it's kind of blends in with the rear property line, but just over the rear property line here, existing, and it comes down along here, and then it goes right to the property line here, and, and here. so. You can see here the here's the wetland line, here's the hundred foot buffer. So in, in some of those discussions of, of saying you know, where exactly is this 
fine. It actually doesn't much matter even if it was pulled in. This is all this is all public zone, regardless of where that is. So everything on this part of the property is a buffer zone regardless. Just wanted to kind of point that out. Um, and again on this plan you have the 85 contour, which is the limit of the floodplain, wraps around and 25 foot line, you've got the riverfront area. And as you can see, the existing pavement comes all the way to the building here. There's a sidewalk right against the building. The existing parking lot, parking space is right against the building. And so part of what we're doing is to reduce the size of this parking lot. And it's, it's in the range of 86, 8,700 square feet of a, of a total impervious reduction here, which is, which is a major benefit. And if you go to the next plan there, you can illustrate what that looks like. See on this plan, this is the demolition and site prep plan. So we have silt fence around the property here. We would have silt sacks installed in the catch basins, and then the this, <coughs> this light uh, dot hatch um, illustrates the area where pavement will be removed. So you can kind of see it all along the edge of the proposed parking lot, and then the pavement that will be removed. But this really shows, and especially in this whole area here that we were describing, where snow storage, um, snow storage, and just and uh, a native uh, plant mix there. And then you can see in here also removing pavement, removing pavement, and removing it along here for a landscape bed, and then removing it against the building here. So, so when you say pavement removal, you, you're referring to the, the permanent condition. In, that, in essence, the whole lot's going to have the pavement removal, right? In, yes. In this, it in, just won't be put back in these places. Yeah. yeah. Right. And and in these and in these places, it's a full depth, so you'd be actually be digging up the base and putting in soil there, so you won't be left with gravel under under there, which we don't want. You know, we we kind of want to restore that to to a more native soil <coughs> condition. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you want to go to the next plan there? Do you want plan? I'm sorry to jump in, but would you mind just sort of pointing out areas where curbing, there will be curbing? Yeah, I can do that. And this plan would, it is where that's, where everything's called out. So I, I, I will do that and I can, I can do that if you want. So the, the intent of the grading is that, well, I, I should say the existing drainage pattern brings everything toward these catch basins and then out toward the wetland, right? So we're maintaining that drainage pattern, and in doing that, you really don't need curbing to direct water along here because it's all flowing in, into the parking lot. So that would be a gravel shoulder, kind of a typical rural road gravel shoulder, just to pr protect the edge of the pavement along, along this. So from, from here, all the way around, there will be no curbing. Then in here, where there will be curbing, because these are proposed landscape beds, so it's to divide the landscaping from the, from the pavement. So this would just be Cape Cod berm, asphalt, asphalt curbing along here, along here, and around there. Same thing around this landscape island, Cape Cod berm. All along here, so a big part of this project, in fact, one of the primary goals here was handicap access um, here, which there currently is not on this site. So this whole area is intended, this is a pickup drop-off area for, for patients um, that will be undergoing surgical procedures. So you have that pickup drop off, you don't have any parking here, and then you have your handicap access up, uh, well actually handicap access is right here, and then in this direction, and then there's a walkway with stairs, and another walkway, these are existing doors. Um, you'll have your main entrance right there, and employee entrance here, and then you have a discharge um, door here, and there'll be a, a, a new sidewalk put along here where there, there is one now but it'll be widened and so all the curving along here will be vertical granite right here and then this will be a monolithic concrete floor so the, the granite will land about there the vertical granite and the vertical granite will transition here to, to nothing um, and we'll have the gravel shoulder and then same thing around these is Cape Cod Burn these this interior islands and there are there's a break in that curving that allow the water to flow through to preserve these drainage paths. They have a break in the curbing with stone to just, to just ensure that the existing drainage can be maintained. Um, so also on here you can see the, the we've part of this here 
um, in removing all the pavement, you're, you're significantly reducing the parking count. That's something that the client had, had, had to consider. And so we ended up with 44 parking spaces. <clears throat> and that, that's just enough. From 77. From, yeah, 77. And, and it's, um, you've got a significant reduction in that. And that's, that's you know, why we were able to have such a large reduction in total impervious. <clears throat> and then, of course, the two handicapped spaces here. You know, meeting the code requirements for handicap accessibility um, for parking as well as access into the building. So part of this here, because of the handicap access, um, you know, you've got your the flood plan. Actually, the flood plan line is actually not on this plan. You can see it on the next um, plan. So I think as far as <clears throat> as far as site layout goes, um, this this is good. Turn to the next plan there, Chuck. So this is our, our, our grading plan. Um, you can see right in here is the, the floodplain line. So everything to the south is within the floodplain. So there's in, in doing these improvements, there'll be some minor fill, you know, minor filling of the floodplain. And that will be offset by compensatory flood storage, which the calculations are over on the right side of the plan. Compensatory flood storage would be in this area here. It's very minor, you know, just just you know installing curbing and then ramps up in there. And it's actually not, you know, it's actually kind of cutting through the area. It's not even the whole area. Uh, the intent with the grading was to preserve the um, existing uh, drainage patterns here. This project, um, you know, there you kind of have to pick and choose which things are, are more critical. And what what we decided was to re you know reconfiguring the parking, providing the handicap access improving your circulation <clears throat> here, but in doing that, you can be limited in other parts of, of, of the project. So the grading right now works, it's a gentle site, and so what we decided here was to uh, maintain the existing, <coughs> excuse me, still getting the over a cold here. <coughs> so we've got three catch basins in this location currently, one here. The primary catch basin is this one in this location. These two were installed after the fact. Um, the condition of these catch basins, these are both very shallow catch basins with um, small three inch pipes connecting into this one. So that was just kind of to alleviate the drainage problem. This catch basin here has a, a two and a half foot sump. Um, this one, three and a half. So part of what we have worked through as well with, um, with Ryan, town engineer is to determine the sump depth because these haven't been maintained uh, over the course of the previous ownership. They're full of sediment. Um, and so when we did the survey, we weren't able to get the sump depth. We did go out with a probe and were able to probe and, and find the sump depth. So catch basins do have sumps here. Um, and again, these two these two really are, are secondary to tie into, into this one just to, to make sure this area drains. And then the so reinforced concrete pipe here, another catch basin here, discharge location here. What's the sump on that, that last one? This last one is the deeper sump, uh, as I Is recall. I think that's a three and a half, is that, as I recall there. I thought that might have been four okay. foot. <laughs> when I read it, I thought it was four feet. Yeah, there's a three and a half foot sump there. So I do want to mention something about this drainage system. Uh, this here is the outfall. It is partially submerged in the wetland. So this whole site is flat, all right? Uh, you don't have much of a grade change here. This is all bordering land subject to flooding. These pipes are all very shallow, not standard design practice nowadays. In order to upgrade this drainage system, you're talking about lifting this whole site a couple feet probably. You could be talking to, to put in what we're looking for here. You're lifting the site, you're in the floodplain. It's it's not a practicable alternative for us here. Uh, it was something that was mentioned. The town engineer, as well as Chuck, said, hey, you know, is there anything you can do here? There's really not. This is a, what our benefit here for stormwater is 8,700 square foot reduction in, in pavement. That's pretty significant. So that, that's about 25% reduction in the pollutant load. We have less parking area. You have more landscaping. Um, you're increasing your groundwater recharge, right? 
removing the pavement, by decreasing TSS load, by removing pavement. So the benefit that we're providing really is in the pavement removal. You know, it beautifies the site, it kind of helps, helps, helps that as well, but it also really improves the stormwater condition because we have a, a, a pretty, um, you know, it's it, very shallow cover over these pipes. So to, put, to, to really get this improved would be just a major, major undertaking and not, not warranted for this project. Have, have you CCTV'd the pipes? Do, do you know that, it's, I mean, if the sumps are filled, has sediment been going into the pipes, or are those clear? Can it actually drain out? Right, that's, that's, that's a good question. They haven't been videoed. I mean, we don't have ponding, so obviously, you know, they're not, they're not blocked, but, but if it's something, what will, essentially what will happen is prior to construction here, we'll have these, we'll have these cleaned and then we'll install the silt sacks before anything else is done. So in doing that, if, you know, that, that wouldn't be a problem to kind of flush those out and as you're doing that, as you're doing the cleaning. So, so that, that could be done to make sure the pipes aren't, aren't blocked. I'm sure, there's, I'm sure there's a small amount of sediment. Particularly if it's that shallow, if it's back, if they're getting backflow, I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So part of that is at the beginning, you know, get those, get those cleaned and then in addition, the, the other thing that we're instituting here as is required uh, is a long-term operation and maintenance plan. And that will ensure that these are clean, that are on, on a regular schedule, that you won't have them filling with sediment, uh, and that your sumps will be effective. So, Can I ask so, why, if you have to take up the, <coughs> the asphalt anyway, why don't you just slope it from north to south, take out the pipes, or bury the pipes? See, why not, sheet why, not, why not just let it sheet flow north to south? Toward the wetland here? Yeah. I mean, I, the intent is just to, to, to mimic the existing drainage patterns, not have any, any overland flow um, toward the wetland. So everything's going through catch basins, providing that sediment entrapment in these catch basins. Um, and just, again, bordering land subject to flooding. You know, They're the inside the 25 foot zone. The, the current pavement is inside the 25 foot zone. Right. There's not a whole lot of space between that area. Okay. Oh, and right. Also, the major pavement um, regrading. We just the goal here is again, you're in the floodplain. We're trying to kind of match grades. Okay. Right. So one open can of worms here. So it's pretty flat anyway. Yeah. 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 And you know, and, and it works. It's it's gentle, gentle slopes. You know, it's not it's not steep, but the water gets there, and any any sediment, you know, from this point forward. They'll be maintained, so it will it will stay in here, and then it, as they start to fill, it'll get clean, so it, it doesn't end up making its way here. Um, so that that's kind of an overview of um, the drainage system and, and why we uh, weren't able to, to make those improvements. But again, like I mentioned, that reduction in pavement really, really gets us there. At, under a redevelopment project, you're subject to certain standards up to the maximum extent practicable. I'd say that exceeds, you know, exceeds if you're moving 25% of the other um, the, the other part here is there is a little bit of runoff that, that, that comes in this direction from the adjacent property. So along here, we have worked with a landscape architect and, and we'll, we'll just probably be using a, like a stone mulch kind of thing here so you don't have any erosion of that. You know, keep that slope stable. It's a, it's a, slight, it's a gentle slope down from here to to this lower area. So this will all be cleaned up, it will be planted, screened, and this is the area where you have runoff, so that's why you see this kind of stone uh, hatch in this area. Can I point out that there's also a little tiny break um, on that long island, and then the curve thing on top to allow water to flow onto the site. I think that's a good point as well, yep. Yep, that ties in with, with that drainage path of, of kind of down in this direction to make sure it we don't we don't block that off because right now again this is all this is all just big. So we're introducing this landscape island to break this up, allow for some screening, which you can see in the landscape plan. So we're we'll further along here. He goes through there. Do you have an issue with that other island? It's flowing right to that. It's got to get around that island. So everything from that site is That's funneling. Blend yeah. up right in, right, right through, right through in here. Yeah. So it's got to get around. That's going to have curving 
Oh, there, yes. There's, there, there's a break right right in the yes. middle here. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's yeah. a break on each of the two smaller islands. Okay. Yeah, and which will then just be we it'll be kind of a stone stone strip, uh, and then you'll just kind of feather your your uh, Cape Cod burn down to nothing, so it doesn't doesn't get torn up. Okay. Um, and then yeah, then you'll have this break here, which you know, which in small rain events, in fact. You know, you'll you'll probably have have infiltration happen there. Uh, again, the soils here, you may be limiting the soils here. You're, you're, you can actually, yeah. Uh, you know, with proximity to the wetland, but to the extent that infiltration may occur, smaller rain events for sure, you can get get some of that in here because again, it's flat. It won't be just rushing through here. It, it, it's just kind of you know, it, 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 on a larger rain event you'll see flow, but smaller events I would a lot would get caught up in these these little breaks. Um, and you can see a little bit of regrading. Um, this kind of dot, this, there's a light hatch, you can tough to make it out, but this, this light hatch area, kind of the limit up in here, <coughs> is a little bit regrading for the handicap access up into the existing building. Oh. We had to, had to hit that existing building elevation. Um, like I said, there's a ramp. It's actually, it's actually not a ramp, it's a, a less than 5% walk coming up in here. So, handicap accessible walkway, there's here. <coughs> All the spot grading, we have a curb ramp. Right here. Did you meet the uh, can you meet the uh, flood storage to one or I can't read what you want to do. Over there is really minor, but we just we did the compensatory analysis on a foot by foot basis for So you replace it at one to one or two to one? Um I mean one to one is what's it's required. We're looking at a lot we're looking at more than that. You're looking at well one of us looks like fifty percent increase from Elevation 82 and 83. Elevation 83 and 84 got uh, one from seven. major taking, increase. Seven, yeah. Taking away 17 and putting back 73, right? In total, yeah, right. In a, to in a total, right. So you've got four times. Looking at a, a <coughs> 55 cubic foot. Okay. So the numbers were small, but we had to run the calcs, right? It's, it's not a major, you know, you're, you're looking at 100 gallons kind of. Kind of you know, not, not a major uh, flood storage operation here. Um, so this this is the grading plan here, and then if we want to get into the landscaping plans, I can just, just quickly go through those. Can I ask you a question about this? Sure. That, uh, storm drains, are you sure that they'll drain that parking lot and you won't get a backup? Because it, you said it discharged directly into water. It's, it's, it's not, it's not, a lot of water. These are. This is a 15-inch pipe, mm -hmm. and there's just a few inches of water here. So, so in you know, in cer certain times of year, perhaps there would be a little more water, but I wouldn't expect that this that this would back up. No, it's going to be fine. Yeah, right. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Ask you a question about the the plan that's <clears throat> to the south side of the drive-through, where you have the the rock landscaping feature. You're going to keep the guardrail there? No, that that will be removed. Mm -hmm. Really, <laughs> there's parking spaces there, right near that that rock landscaping feature, right? Yeah. So we're pulling those away. You've got you've got um, four at least four feet from this down to here. So it'll be it'll be like I said, and it'll be screened. It'll be heavily screened. So on the landscape plan, you can kind of see that um, the plantings in that area as well. I'm just thinking of vehicles that are coming around the corner there. That's a, a very steep slope that goes down there. Um, in, in the winter time, that's before coffee. Very, before coffee. Before yes. coffee. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like well, after, after coffee might be worse. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is. A, I, I, I don't frequent that restaurant, the, the the Dunkin' Donuts, but my wife does. And you know, when you come around that corner, that has a very steep slope that drops off from the drive-through right towards that rock feature. That's why I asked if you leave the cut real there. So the, the plan is to take it out right now. I, I presume if it's a problem down the road, we would try to address it. But I um, like to be hopeful that nobody's car is going to get crashed. If they do, it'll be staff. That's staff parking. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll take care of them. It's good. Well, it's good. or or plow damage sometimes. Yeah. Yes. You, you also have not the, the <laughs> delivery trucks are going to be. They're going to have to use that now because right. I, I doubt they're going to be able to come around the drive-through because that landscape feature that you have in the middle there is now all pavement. Right. So that was something that allowing 
tractor trailers that were delivering to that that business right. to come around that building and exit there. And that that has been a discussion that we've had about the truck traffic, and um, it did come up Monday night at the planning commission as well. Um, one of the things that I noted at the site was when. Um, there was a delivery tractor trailer delivery happening. It was actually parked exclusively in the relief lane. Mm. And so the drive through was continuing to operate even though that car was, was parked, but it was parked in between the lines. I have been, um, you know, occasionally spinning by and, and taking a peek to see kind of what the traffic flow is, when it's congested, when it loosens up, that kind of thing. I think it's, and you have a friendly relationship with the owner, then it's something yeah. you guys can work on as That's far right. as the flow of deliveries. And, and, you know, you guys have certain business hours, delivery can happen. Well, so, so I, I just want to go, this isn't wetland related and I apologize, but I, I'm thinking about the traffic and I'm thinking that a lot of people that are going to use this place are coming off of 128 and maybe your wife knows, but when you come off and go past the Honda place, you're going to have to take a left in. That's got to be very difficult in the morning. Rush out because that that light at the on and off ramps um, on this side of, of 128 back way up, right? And I can see them backing up into actually this area, the, right? Yeah. Get back all the way up to the lights going into Home Depot. Mm. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, Sometimes. But. And and we may have to adjust our business hours to accommodate that, yeah. um, but we also don't have a heavy flow of patients coming in. We're not a hygiene practice, so we don't turn patients over every hour, we, you know, that kind of thing. We're a surgical practice, so our patients come in, they might be there anywhere from an hour to six hours. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't expect the kind of heavy traffic volume um, that would contribute to it. They might have to sit there. And we've talked about um, ways that we're going to accommodate both um, instructing our patients for what to look for in terms of entrance and signage, either um, we have referral slips that they get and we put photographs on the referral slips so they know what the entrance looks like, what the door looks like, etc. We'll be doing that for this site as well um, and we're exploring the possibility of signage yeah. as yeah, well in order to designate. See on here there's a, a, an indication that says enter sign and I would assume that you're going to put an enter sign for the... So a tricky thing I just learned about Reading on Monday was that you can't put a sign on property that's not yours. So we're, we're working to see what we can do and I think one of the suggestions that the Planning Commission made was to work um, with the owners of the Shell and Dunkin' Donuts, which we, we actually already have, to come up with a mutually um, agreed upon dual sign and then have them apply on behalf of their property. And that was all discussed at the, at the planning board hearing. Uh, on Monday. Which of course was a so that you put signs on people's property? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying, I, I just don't know. I don't want to presume yeah. about yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, with an easement, that, that's how that would have worked. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I don't know if we mentioned or you guys heard, but we did get site plan review approval on Monday, so I'm not sure if it's that. And that, a lot of that stuff was discussed there, you know, the, the traffic. I mean, definitely pedestrian, patient, vehicular safety sure. is, is something that we've, we've focused on and, and want to ensure. Yeah. And then, I guess before moving on from this, this drainage plan, I can mention, of course, the, the long-term operation and maintenance plan. The reason I gave you a revised version of that is... The only, the only change on it is on the third page, um, double size, so it's going up the second page, the debris and litter section. So in working with Chuck, you just want to, really want to make sure that I uh, had an eye on the weapon and the resource areas, of course. So that, that has been modified. So the debris and litter section in the operation and maintenance now reads that all trash and sediment shall be removed from wetland, wetland buffer, and riverfront areas every spring and shall be removed from the driveway parking areas as necessary to prevent migration into the drainage area. That's the modification to that operation and maintenance plan. Make sure that the owner does keep an eye on those wetlands and anything flowing around the parking lot. If it ends up there every spring, check it out. And of course, we don't expect much. Uh, and as well, just <coughs> cleaning up the parking lot and standard practice. We'll keep, we'll keep that. It's going to be a visual for all of our patients, so we're, right. we're going to want to keep it nice. You have lawn on the front and on the uh, left-hand side, and then pavement pretty much everywhere else. Um, would it? So, 
what I was asking is, um, and, and you know, every spring works out great, but I have Home Depot picking up their trash every single time they mow mm -hmm. because it's it does accumulate quickly. Oh, yeah. Oh, I totally agree. I would anticipate that any landscaping service that we had come through would be responsible for that. Right. It, and there's not much landscaping around where the wetland is, right? You, you, you on that backside and where the snow storage is, and then along the wetland and coming back. It's not, it's just... No, I think, it, I think it's accumulated. It looks like a lot because I think nobody's attended no, to No, no, you're not proposing anything and you're not going to do any right. work back there, right? No, 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 no. If you flip, if you flip the landscape plan, I think it's, um, if you just go a few sheets ahead. So there, these are standard construction details. Here, here's the landscape plan. So this here is what Chuck was kind of moving through on this back area. This would be pavement removal. Like I said, the pavement isn't off the property line we're bringing it back to. This would be uh, loam and seeded, the seed mix is just right here, um, kind of standard northeast, um, and then uh, road control, plantation mix, is along in here. And the same goes, you know, the reason you don't see plantings along this edge is just uh, an easement. So within here, we can't, we can't put landscape in, this is uh, an existing easement uh, for, for our town utilities. And so, you can see the landscape improvements here. There's in the front of the building, kind of old tired landscaping, so kind of refresh that in here and along here. Uh, there's an existing tree here that will be preserved. This one here um, removed, kind of just growing into the building. So that's what's going on in this in this part. And of course, um, well, I say the front, but in fact, Perico is considering this to be more the front. They're trying to kind of make this the, the draw here. You're driving around, you're parking. And this will be a really nice kind of front entry. So landscape improvements along this this edge as well. And then, as I had alluded to, the screening in this area, planting of, of several trees along the parking lot, uh, some some low growing uh, oak sedge in, in this area here, this area here, a couple trees as well, and again the rest will will be seeded. Whatever is not shown as landscaping. So in this area in here. Um, let's see, and again, part, part of this here was a little bit of buffering for this owner. Again, this, this, this was kind of important. You have people coming out of here, out of surgery, kind of want to be expected to um, drive through right here. So this, this is going to be a nice buffer, nice land to be buffer in this area. And then the last, the last point here would be lighting. So on this plan, I'll, I'll, I'll point out we show the lighting. The lighting. You, you can show the lighting plan. It's, not as pretty as this one is in that one. <laughs> so the lights that are proposed, so right now, in fact, there's actually lighting off the property, kind of old industrial lights. Those are those will be removed uh, in favor of uh, more modern dark sky compliant pole lights. One here, one here in this landscape island, and one back along this corner. However, I will say that in the uh, proceedings of the site plan review hearing, this pole back here will be moving into this area. And part of the feedback we received from Chuck and, and, and others is to just kind of try to reduce the, the lighting intensity at the property lines and especially at the wetlands. So in fact, right now we, we have uh, engaged the, the folks who had consulted on the photometrics. Landscape Architect is working with them. Um, you can see what the kind of the light uh, cast would be. Here's the edge of the wetland. So we are working on this right now um, to get this reduced down at the property line, which is kind of the, the um, vicinity of the wetland as well. And then this back in here, this the shift toward here, and just making sure that there's still coverage of this area, but but pulling that toward this island. And then this island here, we're going to try to have a, a slight reduction in the height of the pole, and depending on how the photometrics come back. If we don't achieve what we need to do, we may shift this pole over a little bit into this into the um, parking lot. So that's that's being run currently, uh, just to just to update the lighting, and that was also part of the site plan review. So that's that's one of the revisions that that'll be one of the final uh, revisions. So the plans you have, I'd say, are final, with the exception of we'll be issuing another set showing the final light pole location. 
Um, this one we all move over here, and then this one is just to be determined. We have to rerun those those lighting levels. The other lights here, there's three smaller lights. One, two, three. This is to light the um, walkways in this area, and then building on the lights over here. So that's all the all the lighting that's shown on this plan. Um, and while I was mentioning this, the other revision of that site plan review, there really wasn't much. The only other one was the yield sign. Right, right now there will be a do not enter sign right here because we only want traffic flowing this way. So to prevent anything, any cars from going this way, we would have a do not enter sign. We discussed that what we would have on the back side of that sign is a yield sign so that you have the traffic coming from the Dunkin' Donuts um, driving through in the bypass lane. Our, our, our traffic flowing from here, making sure that this this year is, is signed. For so we would ask our traffic to yield. Exactly. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Ask so a question about something that was here uh, when we went out for the certificate of compliance on here last fall. There was a thermal discharge sink that was on the eastern side of the building. Is that gone? I'm sorry. What I'm <laughs> Just because I don't know the term. I'm sorry. <laughs> that. that there was the, the form roll of the building had a, a big data analysis and data processing in that, and there was to cool the computers that were in the building. There was a large thermal discharge sink that was out in the eastern end of the, end of the edge of the building that was behind a, a brown stockade fence. Is that still that was there? Back there? I, it's closed and locked. I've never it been able right, to see inside yeah, it. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah. Yeah. If I missed that, that would have been. Not oh, in use, of course, yeah, anymore. It, no, no, no. That was it. It, it was not in use. Yeah, it's just. Uh, it's but just it was there. Has that been removed, or is it, it still there? It hasn't been removed. I have no, no reason to keep there. it, though. Right, and if you and it. We, we've looked in it and have been like, what are they storing? It's empty it now. Right. right. So it's just, just the fencing that's there. Oh, so no, well, there's nothing so, inside. So nothing inside of it. Then the heat sink is gone. They must have decommissioned it at some. Huh? They must have decommissioned it. At some I thought when we went there, I thought it was yeah. still there. We went there, it was still there. Yeah. Right here? What does it look like? Yeah. <laughs> kind of like a, you know the the, uh, cool the fins that are around, uh, the transformers that are up on light poles? Yeah. Just think of those that are on the ground, that just big fin type things that are. Uh, but it was there last fall. Okay. Behind the fence. Like fall of 2017? I'm not going to say. <laughs> well, because I owned the building last fall, so if it was there last fall, so, then... Okay. So, uh, no, he had to get a certificate of compliance to get the, before you bought Before you bought it, to get a, they had a... We had to clear the conditions. Old, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, notice of intent that was out, order, <clears throat> um, order of conditions that was out, and we had gone and done a site visit to just yeah. see what was going on, what the whole site looked like. Okay. The reason why I asked that is, is that's within the 25-foot buffer zone so uh, no one came to us and said oh can we take this out so I, I have I, no reason to keep it I have no reason not to keep it so I guess if there's a plan to get rid of it you, know, you know, might want to talk about it Fine, yeah because you know we have the permit right here it, it's yeah. if you might if you're so planning if to get there, rid of it and and get it out of there it'd be <laughs> Probably, you really only have one option. I think it's right within the easement zone. It, it is yeah. an easement, so yeah. You're, you're probably only seating it in that area. So probably only one option. But you might as well include it here if you want to no, make changes to that. That was discussed at all with the movie. And I think it, it, it wasn't really in the kind of out, out of eyesight of where, of where you're really thinking of. Uh, it is work. It is out of eyesight. Um, I would be hesitant to commit until I know what's in it before I add it to anything. I mean, if it's just the fence, I would be happy to take the fence down. Could be a holding pen for a really old creature. <laughs> I'll tell you. You never know. I mean, sometimes they have bad days. <laughs> the worst clients. <laughs> you, you think this hurts now? <laughs> it's the patients who yell. We'll just talk about it. Um, yeah, I, I, I just to to deter any kind of activity. There's, there's no site because there's no sight line back there. That is actually my, my. Um, most concentrated effort to make sure that that side of the building stays secure. Is that going to be closed off with some kind of a fence from the corner of the building back there, or no? No, because it's the easement, so we can't put anything that. Because um, that was landscape. There was landscaping that was being performed back on the side there. On the side, I think it's all overgrown. Yeah. With, like green, yep. piney th type of bushes. Yeah. So what was, what was back there they needed an easement for? Is it just like a access road to? <clears throat> The DPW access road? What's back in here? Yeah, it's just it's a sewer and water line and DPW access. They check it. They check it, they check it like or? once once a year. Yeah. Yeah. So so Ryan said as long as that they would have 
uh, access. It goes way out. It goes way out. Really it, it was turned into a road. It was recently. turned into a road yeah, due to a DPW. Yes, yeah, yeah. so that vehicle that's got the, stuck. But you just pointed to that's the fence. Yeah. Yeah. That was. So can we leave it <coughs> open ended, and if the client decides that its conditions are suitable to to remove the fencing, that we can maybe just do a minor change and submit a letter to notify the commission that this is we are going to proceed. Can, can we add that to the order of conditions when we vote on approving it? If they it so, between now and the time we do the order of conditions, can we? So, so what's in there, Dave? You wanna, if you wanted to cut those things, could you cut them out? To take the, the, the and to take the fence to, out and remove the cement pad, I guess is what you'd do if you wanted to, or if you just wanted to take the cut the fence down. I really don't know, but I'm not sure. It'd be sure nice at to know point. how much work we're getting into, but yeah. I think that if it would be considered an improvement, and if you wanted to remove it, we would we could add it. At, it, at the time, okay. So if, if, yep. if, we catch it on the uh, certificate change, of compliance with an as build. I'm sorry. If it's a minor That's project the change, the right don't they? It yeah, so we have we easy. have. Um, yeah, it is in the. Yeah. You, that you it shouldn't know. be there. Yeah. Obviously. No. We ask for you to uh, uh, let us know about changes like that during the process, so you can. After the orders issued. After the orders issued. Right. Then they have to re-notify the butters come for us. Minor so big change. Yeah. Once a year, like when they no, so have to drive I, around, that's attempted like, to do minimal no disturbance, just no. remove the fence. <laughs> and just no, no, they go, they go through the back corner of the property. Uh, so they cross no. the parking lot and they go in the okay. back corner. Because they can't get around that. Probably. Oh. So right. what do you think that is like free line? Going yeah, because they don't want to tear. No, they don't want to tear. Yes. Well, also because yeah. there's because there's the, sure. um, yeah. the ditch in front yeah, of the property. I don't think they can get they can access it from the front. So they'd have to go over a curb. I just know that it was in there because I they just talked to the former owner. Yeah. So I'm not clear. Is there is there something inside the fenced-in area or not? Yeah, there's some. It's like the area is some sort of cooling. Yeah. No, no, it's just it's, it's, it's part of not a black hole cooling system. There's no hazardous cooling waste system, system for computers. So. No, so I get that. So, so the heat sink is still there. It was last fall. I don't know whether it's still there now. I looked at the fence. All I saw was a jacket. <laughs> okay. Well, that's well, gone. And, 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 and there's a con <laughs> is, did you see a concrete slab? You don't remember. There, there's so many leaves and sticks, okay. and I, I can't. So there's tell no, there's not, there's no big hulking piece of equipment in there. I did not see one. Okay. Well, if I mean, we that would be good because if, if if there, if there is, there can be all kinds of nasty stuff in something like that. So it's better if it's gone. Mm -hmm. Well. <laughs> If it's if it's just a cooling tower, it's harmless because it's only water. And sometimes right. it's treated water. If it's a glycol right. system, that's a different story. Right. If it's a thermal mass, which is a heat sink, usually it's got some inner kind of material in it that just likes to absorb heat. But I can't imagine if it's. I mean, those aren't small. So if you looked in there and you didn't see it, I I guess I'd report the theft or something. Seriously. Well, everybody that's come by has looked at it and been like, oh, what was this? Was this an old? Dumpster cage was it? You know, so right. everybody's kind of trying to assess what it is, and nobody. It was just a big yeah. exchange. It was. It was my understanding that it was used to cool the main frames that were in the building. And the main frames were cooled by an air system, and then there was a some kind of a, and then it was a freon system or a glycol system that removed the heat from the air system and then cycled it through the heat sinks that were outside under the fence. Interesting. So, so, Dave, if you knew this, the, the former owner... I don't know anything. I do know the former owner. Could you tell her and ask, you know, maybe you can find out. I can find out. Okay. I, mean, well, we have I guess the question is, if there's nothing there, you work out. Can you play softball with the guy? Yeah. I know what you're doing. You can play softball with the guy. I heard all the same things that he heard, and I remember none of that. So it's Just that something with him seeing aliens. I think it's definitely all that's all. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't know what you're getting into. But so I remember that they say we're allowing you to remove it. The important thing. Without yes. knowing exactly what I'm committing to. But they to. won't be writing the order issuing that. It's an idea of a couple weeks to do that. So the, the, you may be able to kind of assess the situation. I, when tomorrow. I go tomorrow to take care of the dirt, I'm going to like, <coughs> right. wear jeans and I'm going to crawl over and look inside and see. <laughs> take some pictures and see what's You're probably going to see a few of us stopping by and just kind of be like, so what'd you find? It's like, like curious. I, we're all like curious I felt like now. a kid. I'm like looking for slats. <laughs> we're all very really curious. Um, I had a question about um, the vegetation. At first, when I was reviewing the plan and I didn't understand the, uh, the easement um, clearing responsibility, um, and I didn't fully understand the the spreading of um, seed on the south edge between the parking and the wetlands. Um, 
I saw all the plantings kind of clustered close to the building and clustered around the islands instead of really filling up that 25 foot zone. Do you know what I'm saying? So like a lot of the substantial plantings, the shrubs, the, uh, the trees, I mean, I, I appreciate the trees in the islands, um, but um, part of how um, I've envisioned that 25 foot buffer zone is, um, is to keep it, um, you know, a more permanently vegetated area, you know, with small shrubs and, um, you know, combination of shrubs and herbaceous and small trees, you know, something to transition and, and sort of um, build out some sort of habitat area. It's a buffer. It's a buffer, right. Um, so that's where the seed mix is. I thought it was a 25 foot no tamper. <coughs> or no disturb, which is it? Well, they well, that's the purpose for the no disturb, is so that vegetation takes hold sure. and, and becomes that vegetated buffer. So, so it's not, um, I mean, I can understand the um, mowing of, you know, I'm just sort of thinking ahead, I, I can understand keeping some herbaceous um, cover on the easement area, because um, God knows I don't want to see a second road out there. Um, but I was just wondering if, um, if you could just sort of speak to where the plantings are right now, because it, um, and I appreciate that you want to landscape the building attractively and, you know, um, you know, to make it welcoming to the, to the clients. Let me um, ask you this question. When you, when you pulled back the pavement, now you've brought that off of somebody else, our, our property back there, is that? Oh, right. So can you show me That's right. where the property is? So, so you're talking about, I That's think. Right. That's right, I'd be asking them to plant on town our, property. Our, yeah, <laughs> I think well, the that's. Well, is not, is not too far onto the property. It's very faint on here. It's, you know, that's the property it's a foot, line? It's a foot or two over. The, the dark black is the property line, and just over it is the pavement. We'll yeah. be setting the silt fence just a little bit behind that. Uh, enough to enough to pull the pavement up and reduce uh, remove the sub base, put in soil and then loam and seed. With so this. everything that's that's brought back now is not other than the grassed seeding that you're putting proposing is not on our property, the town property. You've pulled it back right. onto your onto your property. Your grass seeding right. that strip is on your property too, though, correct? No, what's that? That's strip. Oh, that, that's that strip. is. Yeah. Now, that's yeah. their property. Yeah. 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 And, that's, and that's what we've proposed for this, you know, okay. native seed mix. This won't be yeah. something that will be maintained. Okay. Oh, so you weren't proposing it beyond the property line? Well, we would be putting. Uh, yeah, it would. It would be right. what would be restored um, all the way to the silt fence. <clears throat> you know, we'll install the silt fence, remove the pavement, re re replace the soil, and then and then restore that whole area right up to the silt fence, whatever had been disturbed with that seed mix. And the intent there, again, is a low maintenance, uh, once a year yeah. kind of seed mix. So that's what yeah. we like to use in areas yeah. that are kind of against the parking lot where you don't want to have branches growing on, you know, into your parking spaces, have people driving, you know, right there. It's kind of a better to kind of keep it once a year in the fall, uh, late fall, you kind of wait for the seeds to drop. You'll end up with all sorts of different perennials, yeah. um, forbs and grasses and everything growing in there. So you, I think that, that that was what we wanted to kind of use along here for that for that reason, just kind of be able to maintain it enough. Um, and again, utilize the landscaping interior, kind of create a nice environment for for the site as well, and providing you know the habitat and native plants um, along that edge and along this this big area here. It'll kind of be one of it'll it'll you know it'll be a meadow, kind of a native meadow um, throughout the growing season, and then and then cut once. And for uh, stormwater management, um, just in the lot area, I understand you want to make the maximum use out of the existing um, catch basin system. Um, I'm just asking the question, I don't know the answer, but you know, do, do you think a low impact development or, uh, you know, uh, uh, would be something sort of like, um, what have I seen from UNH? their stormwater group. I've seen things like, you know, um, where stormwater funnels to uh, a tree. A sunken island. A sunken island with a tree. And um, as it infiltrates, 
you know, it feeds the tree and it gets treatment and it infiltrates, you know. And I don't know if this is a good place. It looks like you're almost doing that with the with the crushed stone in between yeah, those two islands. That, that was part of our effort, and, and that was also something that Chuck had brought up as well um, at the design review meeting. Um, so I can kind of speak to that here. So um, those systems are great. They work best in soils that have um, good infiltration capacity, of course, which these don't. Um, so we wouldn't expect you're going to have have an opportunity for that for that you recharge. Don't want those you may trees. just have sitting water. You may just the trees just going to have wet feet all the time. You don't want trees with shallow roots in that right. parking lot. And the other gotcha. thing is that that a lot of the parking lot is, is actually graded away from the only ones where the water is flowing toward are, are these. The rest of the parking lot is flowing away. Yeah. So you wouldn't have water from the parking lot flowing in. The benefit, of course, that we do have is the water landing on it, and that's where we get the increase in. Recharges any any rainfall that lands on it. If it's in the wet season, you know how that goes. But a lot of the summer it's been pretty dry, so I'd expect that those would soak that soak that right up. So you shouldn't really have runoff from those beds. But nothing would really um, flow toward them. Okay, and the snow storage area. Um, I would. I looked through. I read a lot of your notice of intent. I looked through a lot of the plans. I didn't get a good sense of um, how that's constructed. You know, how much of that area is going to be excavated? How is that snow storage area going to be that's, that's a good question. layered, constructed, and finalized and graded? And all that. That's a good question. So, so yeah, a, a, as you know, the pavement does right. over the property line here, comes just kind of right along the property line. So all of this will be a full depth pavement removal. Um, the grading plan shows a bit more, but it doesn't, you know, it's, it's not substantial grading. So the intention here would be to pull this up, pull that pavement removal, remove the gravel, and also to regrade and kind of create a gentle depression in here so that it's not just a sheet flow over land right to the wetland, just a gentle depression, yeah. you know, six inches to a foot deep. Now, I know you don't have much grade to work with, so exactly. you really and, don't. And it's a gent so gentle depression to make sure that you're not having that direct, you know, flow of, um, off there, and so, and essentially, digging down to the grade, loam and seed, you know, it's the typical six inches of loam kind of in that area, and, and then seeded with that same, um, that same seed mix, this uh, road control restoration mix for attention basins and moist sites. So that'll be, that'll be the treatment here. So you'll kind of have that, it'll kind of be a, kind of a wet meadow kind of a, of a system, and it'll dry out in the summer. Uh, and again, runoff isn't flowing into it, it's kind of all coming down, down in here. But, but that is the intention is to provide. Because right now, there's no point in just storing snow on pavement. That's what people do in parking lots. You see it all the time. So why not? So this this is a benefit here. Let that let that infiltrate. So, so in that snow storage area, it looks like that that, that it is depressed, and it looks like it's a it's a cup, and there's a berm, uh, at least on the edge of the wetland. Is there a design discharge point? On on that, or just just all flowing off wherever the low point. Or yeah, I mean, it's finding it's, its own way. Yeah, finding its own way. Uh, generally, infiltration. I mean, in, in the spring, you may you may see a little more, um, a little bit of water in there, but generally, just be kind of slow infiltration. And again, we're not sending water to it, so we don't expect much you know, standing water. But then, yeah, the low point. There's there's a couple points where it may it might flow. Might flow off the is it an area that's going? I, I see the. So I was going to ask you uh, a couple of things. Um, this is going to be a seed mix, so it's going to need to be mowed, right? Once in the fall is how we would typically do do this type of so seed mix. So otherwise, it would. So just one time a year. That's 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 the intention. Yeah, I think. Um, okay, so that that answers that question. And then I noticed that you have snow storage kind of in the back by the south of the parking lot, which is where the wetland is. But you have about two feet of your property, and I just, you know, you're just going to push all the snow right into that. All the plow drivers are just going to push that in. Are we? Or is are that I'm reading about, that wrong? Are you talking about this edge? Yeah. See this snow here. <clears throat> No, so I think you're inferring that. I gotta get that to that. Yeah. That, uh, that is not snow storage. Okay. All right, snow so storage is only on this right hand side of the property. Yes. Yeah, and there's I was a, say, I think that's the unless you use this for snow storage too. 
I mean, I have, I think, other than it's the easement, I, I mean, why not? I think that may happen. Yeah, and I, mean, I no think this, this note that is a little confusing, <laughs> but it does, it does. So I think it's the snow storage is here, and then the south edge. This would be what they would be. Would, this is the landscape park. Yeah, because we wouldn't want edge, snow to be pushed. Edge in that Back. direction yeah and, and i do know that along this right hand side there is a um, chain link fence that's slatted so that as the snow pushes up against it it doesn't go into the wetlands i'd like to find out if you could push snow into the into the easement because that would give you an, another option it's true and Storage it doesn't seem to me too. to be something that they couldn't yeah. get through are there yeah. pipes is there any guardrail on the yeah. south perimeter here's a pipe so oh, Should we, should we have a guardrail maybe, there? Yeah, maybe you can't do that. I don't know. Mike is saying this might be an issue. Um, my other question, I guess we talked about amending the soil. Um, and then I wanted to bring up, because I was looking at Dave, and I know that he wanted to mention this too. So typically, um, we ask for no uh, de-icing inside the wetland, uh, buffer zone, where, where a parking lot area is. Do you have um, some alternatives you can use instead of uh, sodium chloride um, or anything such such as those freezing, uh, thawing uh, ice de-icers? Uh, it's it's a kind of a boilerplate on our um, as an ongoing condition for our certificate of compliance and we ask you to use eco-friendly stuff but it's hard to identify which one works the best and this is a bigger parking lot and we run into this with driveways but we would run into the same thing here so it's I'm mentioning it so it does get on the record that it's been asked about uh, and you're aware of it and then we also say slow release fertilizers I'm sure you can do. It's you know, a couple of trees should be fine. The salt, no low salt, no de-icing. That's kind of what it looks like, and and so it allows you to use sand if you want to. Um, but we had a couple of weeks this past winter where it was so cold for three or four, you know, maybe three weeks in a row, and it snowed, and the snow turned into ice and it didn't melt off like it usually does. I mean, usually you'll just shove your driveway and then the sun will hit that and then that in a couple of days that'll go away, but it didn't. So it'd be something to, to kind of get back to us with how you how you could uh, fill that, make that work. Did I get yeah. that right, Dave? I mean, yep. I think, I, I wanted to mention it, but I think me and Dave both looked at it and... Yeah, and there are some alternatives out there that, that have been I mean, you've got to consider public safety as well, so there's a balance, obviously, and you guys know that. So, but I think, yeah, the intent, obviously, is not to, there's no need to, to, to over, over solve it, but if there's, if there's a need, I'd say that, you know, Yeah, because your did. discharge points are going right into the water, so it doesn't even get to that, you know, the biofilter would probably help out a little bit, but you, I was going to ask you to cut into that pipe and have it run off into the snow storage area, but that... Right, that's the yeah. worms too, I know. We, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, that pipe is below, it's, it's deep, so you have it. You can, well, it's not deep there, but it's... It seems like it's pretty big. Deep, it is below deep. it, yeah. It's right. Here we cut down different deeper. project altogether, but... Right, right, right. I had a... Um, if I can jump in, I had a couple of questions about the construction phase best management practices plan. Okay. Um, um, the inlet protection, so that's page two. Um, inlet protection, like 2C, um, talking about the silt sacks inlet protection. Okay. Um, whatever sediment you're taking out of those um, should probably just dis be disposed off site. Yeah. It, it, says, it says disposed in a suitable area. So it makes me think that's on-site disposal of inlet sediments. Um, yeah, I mean, I think after that, well, sediment material removed shall be disposed of in accordance with all applicable local, state, federal regulations. Okay. Okay. Um, I just wanted to, you know, 
I, I just to avoid any <laughs> just to avoid any small stockpiles from you know little <laughs> little compost pile in the back corner like you know some residents might have or <laughs> you know these little piles that turn into bigger piles. Um, and a lot of it's sediment that would, if you you know, you pulled the silt sack, cleaned it up, it's just the same material that was flowing into it, so you kind of put it back and it'll end up under the parking lot. Right. Might be. But if it, if it were to get removed, then yeah, for sure. Right, right. Um, I, had a que I had a question about grading, but that's um, dealt with. I have a question about um, inspection frequency. Um, and, and maybe we could deal with that when we get to the order of conditions drafting it um, or we can you know we can deal with it now but during the construction phase um, is, isn't our isn't our inspection of all the inlets and the erosion controls that you know at least daily or is it I mean that's my hope but that somebody walks around and takes a look at it so, so this is kind of like a, how we would redo the roads. Okay. Yeah, and so for the roads, they cover them. Yep. And then they clean them when it when it's over. Um, in one in and, one whole maybe process. That's, that's something you guys would would. I don't know when you're gonna um, back out each storm drain. That's um, true. For this, you could it's do that after you finish the parking lot. That's or maybe twice. There. The goal would be before and after, kind of, right? So yes, do, it do it before, okay. make sure that they function with the silt sex when and needed. keep the majority of anything out, and then after construction. If, if um, necessary. Yeah. And do you but have I, any I safe guides for that necessary. first flush of when you actually open up the system? Uh, I don't know. Are you, uh, you can keep silt sex in place for a little while, too. I mean, because I mean, you can't get to the end to do anything. I mean, because right. it's, it's in the water. But you could get to that last storm, get to that last uh, storm drain, and then I guess you could block the pipe, and then I don't, I don't know. I, maybe I you think, know I mean, something. You could, you could request that they keep the silt sacks in place for, for a little while to make sure that there's nothing flowing into them. And yeah. I think that would make you guys more comfortable. I mean, I think hopefully the paving contractor would you know clean it up, make sure it's nice, and there shouldn't be much much flow. But the silt sacks typically, you would, when you're when you're done, you would pull those. Yeah. Seems to me. Yeah. It seems to me our two biggest typical um, problems during construction are are the catch basin inlet protection um, and and erosion getting out of totally out of hand. So. Um, yeah, and we're, there's a benefit here too. But it's flat. flat. It's flat, flat so. Toward, I'm toward the center not, rather than off the edges. Quite if so. it was flowing off the edges, we'd be using more than just silt fence, probably. But in this case, I think silt fence is all that's really warranted. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and if anything further, we may use straw waddles and things like that. Um, the second to last page on the construction phase. Did you get into frequency? Did you want to mention that? You said. Um, I, you know, I said daily. Um, Oh, I thought you meant uh, so the reports were going to be. Well, that's that's the next um, inspection maintenance uh, operator personnel must inspect the construction site. It's written here at least once every 14 calendar days, and within 24 hours of a storm event of a half inch or greater. Um, that seems to me that seems too infrequent. To do the construct construction site inspection, you know, every two weeks. And this will be this will be a this will be a quick um, project as well. Okay. There's a timeline on this, so I, that yeah. wouldn't be a problem at all for increased Here. frequency. Yeah. We can we can we can do that. Is you guys can. As a matter of fact, they're gonna they're gonna have to do this project within a month. Gonna, well, that's what I that's what I was kind of hearing from it. you, and I was thinking by the time this happens, the project's going to be over. <laughs> with. One, We're not going to one or two inspections in that. Yeah. And that okay. We did that. Yeah, that would be fine. No problem if you want okay. to condition a, a, a you know yeah. daily. It's just a site contractor with, with at a minimum. Piece. You know. Yeah. Um, that's fine. If you that know. that last that second to last paragraph on that on this last page of the construction O and M. Um, it says. Um, 
you know, the checklist and documentation about inspection is going to be sent to the DPW. I think it was just a small miss that it also has to go to conservation because you've said it in other places. Does direct discharge into the storm drains? <laughs> That's the same DPW that built that massive gravel no, road no. without a permit. So we'd like to be added we'll to that list. But, Make um, sure you send it to Chuck. Good work. <laughs> but, I'll include that as part of that. Um, so, so just, you know. Update, the, update that construction. Just. Days. Yeah, we can submit an update <coughs> one of those. Yeah, yeah. The prior to the issue ends up order that I'll make yeah. that note so I don't forget. Um, sorry. Hold on. You know, I just I'm figured while I'm here. Sure, our order of conditions is going to include. All right, yeah, we have boilerplate that asks for it four times a year for the first year, and then we reevaluate it after that. And if the sediment hasn't built up above what their recommendation to, to uh, back it out, we drop that down to two or one time a year. So we don't know what's going to happen with your site, but we we uh, pile up on inspections during the first two years. No problem. And that's in the order. It will be in the order. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's May 9th. May 9th is your completion date. Um. What month are we? May 9th is the day that we can start. Okay. If we don't have it, we have the 20 day appeal period. Yep. Yeah. So we'll be back here. Obviously, before that. Well, hopefully, I think the intent. Start. We'll start work. They can start the exterior work. Yeah, so we'll all write this. Assuming everything goes. Yes, they can the intent exterior. is that, you, that, that we could hopefully reach an agreement and close, and then you guys have two weeks to write the order, and that, that will then get them able to start in early May. I think that, that's the intent on the schedule. So if there's. That, but if, was just, you could even leave, you know, you could even leave it open, and then we could close an issue on the same night, and I could, yeah. I could work with Mike, and they could, you know, more sure. input. But it will be written for the next meeting, okay. and we would need to, to keep on this time frame. We would need to conclude an issue on that meeting, even right. if we're rewriting, uh, you know, any parts of the order beforehand. But what we typically, what we do is I write it, and I send it out to the applicant, and you guys can comment on it. You know, to me, but then at the meeting, and we added. All right, I just have one more comment on the long-term O and M plan, um, and that is there's a number of places where you discuss um, heavy rainfall or every rainfall, um, like for example, discussing catch basins and the overall site grading stormwater management parts on the third page. It might. I, it's a suggestion. It's not uh, that maybe you literally put in, you know, if you receive an inch or more of rain or what, you know, pick whatever type of storm over 24 hours, right, in the long term. I mean, I, you know, sometimes when. Quantify, yeah, quantify. Sometimes when it's, I mean, I understand you're trying to be practical, but sometimes if it's not exact, people don't know exactly what to do. You know, so just a little bit. Just a little yeah, bit of specifics. Define, define yeah. um, and there's a, there were a couple general um, phrases like um, routine maintenance, periodic inspection, regular inspection, um, sweeping the area periodically. You know, other general yeah, phrases again, which which we do, yeah, which right. which we usually do specify in the order of conditions. So can only go to the dentist every six months. Huh? Kind of like going to the dentist every Might six like. months. If you do. Don't you get tartar so if, in your if you, I can send you what we have in the order of conditions. If you could incorporate it in the O&M plan and then send it back to us, I could get it to Amika and so we could kind of be closer together on this before yeah. the next meeting. Yeah, do a standard long-term. I'm not so sure that no, sweeping I... and the dates for the sweeping are involved, are, are talked about. No, I just want to... Uh, I just wanted to hash those out so that, you know, to get us, the more we talk about tonight and, and come to terms with, the faster you get to your order of conditions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. It's not a, it's not a major issue. You have, you have annual maintenance or, or regular maintenance. Right, anyway, right. So I, I'm pretty confident we can get to 
something like you that's reasonable for both sides. Like you know, I think some if our standard boilerplate should probably be fine. Yeah, if Chuck sends that, I'd be happy to review that, and, and we, can, we can work to make sure that that's updated. And of course, yeah. those, you know, even if we don't cover everything, your conditions kind of supersede or work in right. line with that, it. That's, that is the right. case, however, what we find all the time is nobody ever reads them. Well, I, I actually disagree. You know who does a damn good job on the place? They, on the Mark place? Bird Drive. They good. never forget. Good. Good. Some people. Yeah. <laughs> Not all. Right. A lot of people. So if we can incorporate some of the help. The more you can incorporate into the actual documents. Yeah, that you can submit revised documents. Yeah, yeah and it, do, it doesn't have to be a burden. Like I said, we just want to watch it in the beginning, and then if, if, if nothing's happening, we're not going to make you do those reports just to see that it's, it's still well, it's stabilized. And yeah. it's, it's kind right. of a known commodity at that point. You're not worried. Yeah. Great. Okay, so what do the members of the commission want to do? Do they want to... Um, so, Becca, uh, uh, you want to close thing. it and. Uh, Do you have an issue with the with the wetland line, line on to the south? Because part of the notice of intent is to certify that line. So I, I want it to let be left open. I'm, so I'm just gonna, I'd like to not close it. So that's where I'm at. Like, yeah, I mean, I would like. We can still have a dialogue with the applicant. All right. I think I think Chuck can start preparing the the order of conditions. He, he knows. Then I would like you and me to go out and take a look at, at the line. And what about the line? Well, other than this really line. that piece, the, the rest of it doesn't matter because it's not a you know it's not part of this proposal. And the line shift. I mean, if you if if these flags move. I mean, you're, you're, you're thinking that they were, they need to move in toward our site a little bit up in this area. Just a little bit, area. yeah. You know, if they do, you're talking about this buffer shifting, just, you know, a couple feet here. We're already, you know, we're, we're the same mitigation is, is in place. So, so yeah, my issue is, is less with, I, I think, I, I like the project overall. I think the, the project is going to improve what's it's going on out there today. It's but when we certify a line as part of notice of intent, that is valid for three years. You can explicitly exclude approval of the wetland line and label them as approximate. I mean, and that's, that's, it is off-site, I mean, it is on your town property, so that's, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, the line on the west side, I, I believe it's labeled as approximate because did not go on and inspect it. So if that um, helps in facilitating closure overall and saves people time, I mean, we're fine with that. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. Just so we don't have a, a line that somebody comes back with and not that you're leaving in the next less than Oh gosh, no. It, but, we'll be there a while. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> things have happened before and, and somebody comes back and says, look, here's the line that you guys said is, is fine. I, I, I'm fine with it. We say it's approximate, I'm okay with that. Those two lines, approximate? Yeah. 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 I think it's not going to change what's being proposed in this project. On mm -hmm. this, this site, uh, it's, we it's, have something we know about, which is the parking area. It's being reduced. I mean, to me, that's really that's a proof. That's right. the whole. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. All right. Do so I hear a motion to continue? I make a motion to continue. Chuck, I would say you want to start preparing the order of conditions. Yeah, I, I will. I mean, the plan is to have it ready. Hmm? NOI 270. Um, NOI 270. I didn't get a file. <coughs> do you, do you know, Mike, do you know the file number for this? Yeah. It's okay, but I, yeah, it's, I just didn't. Oh, and it's uh, 0642. You no. sent it, and you were like, here's no. the DVD number. Yeah. That. No, I know, but I bet it's 0642. Oh, oh, it's right after that. Oh. And there were no comments. The DP, no. The DEP file is 270-0696. 0696. Heidi Davis from DEP reviewed it. She had no technical comments. Actually, I spoke to her because I was waiting for the file number to be issued, and she was happy about the reduction. And, um, no. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. All those. It's a continuum. So. 
All those in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for waiting. I do not. Before you start the next one, could you say you don't have one? I don't have one. <laughs> we'll, we'll allow that. Point idea. of personal privilege. Point of, is that what you say? That's what we're, Bill we're, used to say. Oh. Point of personal privilege. Would it be privilege? helpful to give him the markups? That I had? Yeah. yeah. No, no, I was going to say. Maybe. <laughs> Me <laughs> you can have my copy if you still want a copy, but... No, are you kidding me? I don't know why, you know, some, some permits that I get in front of me, I'm like, sure. Oh, I'm going to, like, like oh, shred them. Sometimes the, the more documents you give, the worse it. I didn't know any flavor. I did. I'm sorry, this is because I'm... Teal. Teal. Like the... On the flatness. The flatness is, is, um, oh, is it drainage... Dot HR like fail like no matter what. You're going to get less so traffic than it was if it was when it was an it's office. It's fill over a swamp. You like it is fill over a swamp. Uh, it's like the bagel Boston. place and on <laughs> Main Street. Are you kidding me? Teal. Do you know what I have to say? Yeah, don't eat it. No, no, no. Just teal. Yeah, yeah. I think they're right, yeah. though, that you're not, they're not. Not HR. I understand that, but still. still. Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. It's not going to be anywhere. Yeah, I mean, doesn't it? I mean, that pattern already exists, right? Exactly. But I would think my, if I were oh, really? in pain, <laughs> I would have a hard time finding my... Well, so I do think they're, they're going to have... It's going to be... Um, I, the wrong way. I think you think they're going to have that problem. You know, they'll probably so like, put on their HR. website. Like, I didn't play the trick of this place is you go... I think you need a big do not enter sign. Yeah. Yeah. Or no sign on the way, I, You know what I would do? <laughs> if, if I would go to the next <laughs> hill, let's go on me to make it turn right. around and then right. come you can go into the right. old Keola building. Neon sign. Yeah. 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 Right in the wetlands. Really big. Yeah. Well, I, I think yeah. that's going to be a challenge. The line. <laughs> oh, one of those big, you know, those TVs they have in Peabody, they're like Between 80 feet long. Yeah. Yeah. Blasting it away. cups out their window. Aimed at Wakefield and over the pond. You know, who we can blame for that is this guy who walks around town. Do you know John? Uh, with a cane? I, I walks around. He collected in the last five years, he's been keeping track of what he's. He's been kind of inventorying it. He's collected something like 70,000 cubic yards of trash. And he's, he's documented what percentage are needles, what percentage are cigarettes, what percentage are like, you know, and, but he's like, he's our little environmental Robin Hood, just, and he's trying to just stay healthy. Bring he's fine and uh, he's just trying to, he has to eat. Oh, no? And I'm like, and he's got yeah, special sure. bags yeah. from the state highway department. You're right. Special Black bags from the MLBPW. And he literally sends them a text. No, no, I'm good. With a I, oh, no, no, no. no, no, no. no, no. And they just you know, come and pick it up. And, I, and then I, I haven't talked to him since. But I have his phone. I have his phone number, too. Like I said, he's my first official tour, so I'm going to keep that promise going. Welcome to Reading. Thank you. Very excited. I know. It's always usually to kiss. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah, I never get it. Water conditions we'll for 270-064-1306 Main Street, Mass 11 Lot 226 Tower Home Homes. Hi, hmm. members of the board, uh, city staff, thank you for staying up late with me this evening. <laughs> We're going to comment you're late, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My name is Allison Hammer. Uh, I work for Hammer Design and Development, and I represent the owner of this lot, um, Jean Machado of Power Home Loans, who's not able to be with us tonight. Uh, some of you may remember this uh, order conditions from um, years past, uh, when the site was originally developed as uh, Louisa's Pizza World, or intended to be so developed. Um, my client, uh, Jean Machado, has since uh, purchased the property and is intending to uh, develop the property as a uh, office building uh, for his business, uh, Tower Home Loans. And uh, in order to uh, expedite and not complicate this process, uh, we are using the same envelope um, that was approved uh, by 
uh, both the Conservation Commission and generally by the Planning Board uh, with some uh, extremely minor uh, adjustments on the site plan. Um, and uh, we have uh, Jack Sullivan here who can speak to those uh, specifics. And uh, between him and I, hopefully, we can answer any other questions that you have before we all go to bed. Thank you. <laughs> Turn it over to you. Okay. Yeah, great. Uh, just to follow up on what Allison stated, um, we're really making very, very minor uh, plan changes. We are in front of the CPDC on Monday night. Chuck, do you mind just going to the, the site plan and I can just show the changes? Um, full engineering? Oh, this one here, architectural site uh, plan? Full civil, go to the full civil, civil engineering site. Uh, in, uh oh. Uh -oh. So, um, like we say, we have an active order of conditions. I just want to go through some of the changes. As Allison stated, this, this site was approved with a building footprint 40 feet by 55 feet. They're, they're staying within that footprint. The, the parking layout is the same. Travel movements through the site are the same. Drainage is all the same. Dumpster location is the same. Limit of work line is the same. Um, the changes, with the Pizza World submission, we had a, uh, a pad and an air conditioning unit here with two bollards. They've been removed, and the AC units have now been moved to the roof of this building, so that's a positive change. With the Pizza World application, there was a, a rear door here with a, with a uh, concrete pad, and there were going to be two bollards there as well. Those have been removed. Um, to provide access around the building now, we, we put a, uh, we've changed this all to a four foot wide concrete walkway in the rear. That was gonna be a paved surface previously, so it's still the same amount of impervious area, and we still maintain the 18 foot travel uh, lane that the fire department wants. Um, Jeff, the yep. there's no access out the back any longer? There's what? There's no access out the back any longer? Is there a rear door to the building? I don't believe so. There's a, there's a door here, there's a door here, and then there's, um, we still have the handicapped accesses. I don't think there's any rear access to the building. Um, although this is, some of this works outside your jurisdiction, but um, in the front previously, there was, they were going to be pavers when it was the pizza world in a fenced area. They were going to have outdoor seating for their restaurant. That's been removed since this is an office building, no need for outdoor seating. But what we try to do is um, we, we put a walkway to access this walkway so any pedestrian access along Main Street, they can still get to the site through, through that area. The only other change, and it's outside your jurisdiction, it's an improvement to the site, is uh, previously for the Pizza World there was no fire protection service, no sprinkler system. Uh, Tower Home Loans wants to put in a sprinkler system for their building, so we're going to have a dedicated either a two or four inch water line coming in through this area to access a mechanical room right here. The size of that water service is still to be determined. But those are the extent of the site changes. Chairo, there's uh an amputation area in the front and two in the back. Yeah, and range triangle areas. Right. right. So if, if you those go still in there, those are still in there. Okay. So if you, if you go to sure. the next sheet sure. down, this this is the drainage plan. Okay. Yeah. So if you remember with with Pizza World, um, he was trying to figure a way to cost effectively do the site, and um, we originally had vertical granite curbing, and he priced it out, and we had more of a conventional system. Um, this system is the one that was approved. Um, curbing was eliminated except along the building lines. And we have a series of like crushed stone infiltration trenches that lead to rain gardens with emergency overflow systems um, that would go off. And it's still the same system. It's a, it's a, it's a low impact stormwater management system. Um, I've already talked with Ryan, the town engineer. He noted there were no changes that had been approved before. The drainage patterns are the same, too? Same. Same drainage patterns. Mm -hmm. No increases in impervious surface. It's, it's, it's basically the same plan with the minor changes I just highlighted. The, based on the CPDC meeting, there will be some architectural changes, but it doesn't affect the footprint. Um, the foundation that 
going to be used for this building is, is similar to the one that Pizza Row is going to use with the, they call it the... I'm going to say it wrong. Helical? Yeah. Helical? Helical. Oh yeah, my God, why can't I get that right? Helical piles? I didn't know how to say it either. Yeah. So there's no basement? No, no basement. And the lighting is... I can't do a basement. Lighting, we're still working on the lighting. CPDC wasn't ha too happy there with our with our lighting plan. There were a number of lights. We're going to look. There were like 12 lights uh, around the building area. Um, no parking lot, but associated like on, on, on the building themselves. Photometric, do we get something like that? We didn't do a photometric, but we did provide um, Is CPDC asking for that? Yeah, we can provide it to you as well. Okay. Anything we provide to CPDC, we'll copy this commission on. Um, but it was all building-mounted lighting. There's no lighting associated with the parking lot. We don't have, there'll be nothing like light poles. With there were light poles. There were? I think there were. I think, I, I, I believe. No, there's, yeah, I have. They've shown uh, I have 12 some. light poles on the original submission that we, at uh, CPDC, looked at last Here, night. Oh, let's said, take a look at they it. They so. too many. Right? I, I, I think we're just looking yeah. at what you're, you know, what you're proposing is something here. Yeah, so they asked us to both cut down on the number as well as to look at something that was going to be shielded um, and a little bit more directed. So, uh, yeah, you can see them there on poles. So I believe we have shown 12 lights on 12-foot poles, so we'll be cutting down the number and also looking at maybe an alternative uh, lighting fixture. Um, for what it's worth, um, you know, this is a, you know, 9 to 5 type business, um, so it's not like these lights are going to be on at, you know, 11.30 at night, uh, you know, bothering neighbors, uh, light pollution, uh, you know, these are lights will be on, you know, office, how late will the latest person leave, 7 o'clock, something like that, um, light, set lights will go off at that point, so. Right. And we'll work with the project architect on some of those lights could be bollards, some could be attached to the building. Right. To have that many posts doesn't make sense, so we'll revisit that and get a copy to you as well. Isn't that the, the closest residence to this is probably 300 feet? 250, 300 feet? Aren't they right in back? They're, they're, they're in back. They're across Walker's Brook. Uh, they're way, way back. No, yeah. no, there's a residential, there's a residential yard that, that abuts Walker's Brook. Sure. It's a blue yeah, but it's, house. It, it's it is, a private but it's, well. It's on, it's on, uh, but it's back a ways. Uh, uh, Percival Avenue. In the same area? Percy Ave. Right. Right, but that's that's quite a quite a distance away. That's um, that's it's, oh, here, it's here's, like, like here's across, our site here crossing the corner of, of where uh, Starbucks is. It's a ways off. It's it's quite a ways yeah. off. See, this is our site here. Mm -hmm. Right. This is the closest house right there. Right. Yeah. Right. It's a long way away. to the edge of the parking lot. Well, if they get the lighting right, it's not going to no. be a problem. No. So, well, plus, and, and plus in the back, I think it's going in the back, is the planting plan, and yeah. the planting plan is heavily, uh, you know, heavily used on trees. So they're going to grow up and they're going to have that shading. So I, think, I think we're putting a fence a to right at the 25-foot line, a six-foot yeah, high privacy fence. fence. Yeah. And I think that came up originally because of concerns with light glare to that neighbor, which yeah. when the leaves are out, you never know he's there, but when, when, in, right. when the leaves exactly. fall, mm -hmm. you could get some glare, so that was put in. Yeah. So, so. That's still proposed. Of course, you know, let, that is likely less of a concern now that the mm -hmm. use has changed mm -hmm. to a daytime use and not a, you know, 24 hours, like, you know, day, all day into the evening yeah. use, but obviously we just want to uh, continue everything that was approved uh, to the largest extent possible as well as incorporating any further requests. Um, is there any um, thought to um, maintaining, saving is saving um, some of those monitoring wells that have been installed there? Well, we do have an LSP who's going to be on site during construction. Yeah, you know who the, so it's Mike Richard. He's on his own and so he's, 
So he he will he is our LSP for this project. What do you think he's going to tell you though? It's what's the, what's the concern for what LSP for? Yeah. Well, there's a big gas station. I know. I know. Who's going to go and check them? Not yep. needed. I mean, it's not. I'm just asking the question. No, that's one of those things. Well, that's like, why I'm you asking know. the follow-up. So I was wondering where you were going. We're going to have a well on the ground on a closed-down site. Is there a process for people to go back years later and recheck? <laughs> It has happened. I'm not saying it happens on every site. You know, I'm not saying it's going to happen here. I'm just asking the question. Oh, um, no, I wasn't putting having, you on Having just worked on a project you where, yeah. you know, you spend two to three thousand dollars to install two or three of those wells, you know, you just sort of think, oh my gosh, they what? They destroyed them? You know, a data point that like, anyway, um, you know, just where are they? This They're like, peppered throughout. You can't you can't avoid them. There's like 17 or 18 wells them. throughout the site. Right. Um, right. I know. I, I do Just remember going in back in time with Pizza World. There was an idea of trying to save some of them as we go along. I don't know permanently. Maybe but, some of the down gradient ones. But during maybe. construction, if, if there was still testing, I'm not I'm Probably not sure where that stands with the LSP. And the reason why they, you were saving them is because it wasn't closed out. He was moving right. ahead, and now it is right. To. And Getty was going to take the responsibility for continuing to try to get the site and compliance. Right. But well, as it happened, it was closed out. Or risk assessed, and usually it's given some status as a you can't grow tomatoes or have a kindergarten on the property. Right. There, there's deed thousands. restrictions when when the if, uh -huh. if it was Exxon yeah. sold this, there, there's a deed restriction saying there can be no residential devel development for 30 years, no matter who buys it, so it runs with the deed. Right. Right. So that's why it's just, just set for commercial. It's previously a gas station anyway, so yeah. why would you, you know, why would you put a house on it? Anyway? One question for the commission, just so um, for timing on the order, I, uh, we're trying to see where we stand with this. When was it a, When was it issued and are we getting close to needing any sort of extension? We can probably talk to Chuck after about it. But No, we figured it was two years. I'll check again, but someone asked me a while ago and we checked it. It was like two more years. Two more years, okay. Um, it's good. Not have that Tons much time. Two more think, years for what? I think this was on right the when I started on the, the permit. Is good. I've been on um, oh. for this for project. This existing oh, permit yeah. has that's been why, approved. That's why I These asked. are minor changes tonight. Because usually you have three years, and then we could request like right. two one year extensions. Is that mm -hmm. or? I thought so. there was a regulatory no, it's not, we don't vehicle no. where you can, you can have as many as you want. Oh, okay. Where you, um, where you I can did, renew I thought the I checked, year. and I didn't think it was Yeah. Well, I've been on a mission two years on this, so I think there's just more than a year. A request. Yeah. How long yeah. are the construction I heard this one. This one. Yeah. And I know they are anxious to get this started uh, and built as soon as possible. I think, I mean, I know my client, they would really love to be in the building at, by the beginning of next year. I don't know if that is going to be a So, this is a, a minor plan change. Yeah. Here, right? No, this is so Jack um, is here tonight to give us an overview of the project because it, you know, just just to make sure we all understand, and then um, and then now we're supposed to figure out what you want to do so from what you heard and from the changes that are presented. Is this a minor plan change, or is it? amended order of conditions. They actually would come back with the planting plan incorporated into this, um, the photometric, so we could look at that, and then we could decide at that point, or you can decide tonight whether you're going to ask them to just do a minor plan change. I mean, So, so an order of conditions has already been issued or not? It has. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the landscape plan that you submitted with this full set, is that exactly the same as the pizza world? Uh, same as the pizza and, world. And wasn't that? Um, but there's some additional landscaping I have to provide between the 35 foot and the 25 foot buffer, and we're going to provide that to you. I, I from from a previous order, there was supposed to be oh, some plantings okay. done. They they were never done. So in order to fulfill that requirement, I told Chuck, a, a, we looked, we reviewed that planting plan, but a lot of it would be destroyed with our parking plan, but. 
Chuck said at a minimum you need to at least get some plantings within the 25 to the 35 and we're going to have a landscape architect provide some sort of planting planting plan to the commission. To was this when we consolidated the... Yeah. Okay. So it was the one thing hanging on one of the orders of conditions and this owner said that he'll take on the planting. He doesn't mind. And when I brought this up to Jack, you know, the next thing I hear is that they're going to develop a plan, look at the list, I sent them the plan, and whatever they can fit in there, and they're using a landscape architect, so, you know, it should be right, um, they will. And I guess they could use the rest around the site, there's, there's, there's others, so um, we just wanted to, uh, I mean, that was part of what you guys agreed on. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have that planting plan with that plant list incorporated into this plan, uh, I guess, in back of the 25-foot uh, line. So but that was already a condition, right? It was. It was. Yeah, so, I, I mean, my opinion is these are minor plan changes. I agree. Uh, we're, not, um, we're not substantially redesigning the extent of pavement or the construction of the building. If anything, we're taking structure away from the outside of the building. I just, I don't see... I don't think it's a substantially big enough change to the design. I agree. I agree. I do. Yeah. So there's going to be a minor plan change. We just need the planting. Yeah, those two things that I asked for is the planning plan and the photometric. photometric. And anything else? No, everything else should be. Have to vote to approve the minor plan change. Yeah. No, they'll just present it. Okay. Um, and, and again, this this came to the well, commission well. because it was, um, you know, there's a lot of material here, and we're running out of time, and if Jack could come in and we could get you know, this, the drawings in front of you and you can make your own decision, sometimes that's easier than doing them pouring over many, many places. I'm assuming there was an O&M plan? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. There was a just, lot. I can't remember <laughs> Okay. We will have to vote on the minor plan change. Yeah, when they... Okay, yeah. When our motions be. Yeah. And we, we will need a set of plans. Right. But. Right. And, ju and just so the commission knows, our site plan approval is about to expire. We had... So the pizza shop was approved. They got a one-year extension. There's no way to further extend that. The only way to keep that permit active is to begin some type of construction. So what we're going to look to do is stake out the limit of work, put in the hay bales, post a DEP file number sign, and that'll show that we're moving forward on that permit and CPDC's happy with that. So I just wanted to let the commission know we're not going to look to do any work beyond that, but it's just to, to exercise the, the permit. Because we do have an active order now, we could, you know, the, the former owner of Pizza World could have put in the hay bales already, and so it's not like we're doing something we're not allowed to do. But I just wanted to make the commission aware that we're going to look to do that shortly. Is this site being used as a staging area for someone at this point? I don't think so. It used to be. It's like there's. It used, it used to be. With the water road construction. Yeah, with the water main repaving. replacement project yeah. on Main Street. Yeah. They, it was one of those. But that was previous to this owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it. I did, you know, when I drove up and down Main Street, I did see whoever the contractor was. I think it was for the town was using it say, yeah. to park equipment. Yeah, and, a lot and, of it. And there was pipe mm -hmm. and materials. Yeah. yeah. What does the town do? Do they rent that space from the owner, or do they just? Yeah, they do. The town actually doesn't have any big uh, staging areas in town. So right where uh, Cumberland Farms is, if you drive a little bit further there's that rotary it's so bad they were thinking about using that right well they did that when they did that rotary that so Zani that's that's gone that was one of them yeah so Arnold Ave when they Monty did Python. West Street <laughs> they're not going to use Sick that twisting. they used to use that area going to the gun this club on the right hand side yeah. Zani also on go, he got so we'll upset go he just put all those barriers up so they couldn't do it anymore this well, I think that's kind of what happened at 306. I think they just went and did it. Um, 
All right, yeah, the only thing I was going to add to what you said, Jack, about getting started is um, this minor plan change, which is, you know, it's obvious. Um, you could have presented that to us um, while the project was going. So I don't think we're going to put any restrictions on any start you're, you're you know, anticipating doing. Yeah. It's okay. If you want to okay. do what you said or do more, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, obviously, we'll contact you to inspect the the erosion control. Yes, yeah, substantial like sites. So you got to... Really I just didn't want you to think like, wow, they're moving ahead. They, they we're just looking to get, we're just looking to keep the permit alive. I don't think, I think Chuck's you, ever think said that to somebody. <laughs> what likes me? <laughs> you could have just gone ahead, and we would have been okay no, with no. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we needed to understand this plan, but now that, that we do yeah. understand it, yeah. it's you know, yeah, it, there's no, there's not significant changes, and you could do as much as you want yeah. under the old order. You're working under your old, the existing order of conditions mm -hmm. okay. um, and come in with a minor plan change. I mean, yeah, you'd have to review that. I think even the order says, you know, when, when the landscape plan is ready, we'd have to review it and approve it. Okay, great. Good stuff. Well, you still have to look up the order of conditions for him, though, to make sure, certain that that's not... Yeah, if you get a minute, I'll go do it now so you can sleep good. Sure. <laughs> Is there anything we can or I'll sign? check it when I get home. Yeah. On the, on the, yeah. What? Is there anything we can sign? On this? No. Anything else? Just send it. give us the right page. What are we doing from, with Meadowbrook? You're just trying to keep us. Yeah, you just keep it alive. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm still trying to work with the abutters on that. What do you have to hit on, dude? Cambridge. With Meadowbrook? That's not too bad. Yeah, at least it's not like at least it's not five o'clock at night. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the driveway. We're talking about moving the building and the clubhouse. Yeah, we're there. That's not going. We're not moving the clubhouse. So if they they wanted us to look at different alternatives, like move the clubhouse back like four hundred feet onto the site and reconfigure holes and. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually talking about this. It wasn't well, even considered. Yeah, I'm still amazed I didn't get the other nine put this in. ledge back there and oh. and then to, to redo the course. Wow. Yeah. So, but the, there's, the club now has an attorney and they're working with the abutters to try to work out some issues before we come back. It's been taking a little while. So yeah. is this going to be continued again tonight? Yes. Wow. So you, don't have any, you don't have anything in front of you to, to look at? Have you had a guess? Oh, we did have Is it like months away or? I was checking. That was for like a month yeah. away. Yeah. No, I was checking. Yeah. Probably, yeah. I, I was looking through my stack of papers. No, it's going to come and go. It comes and go. It's supposed to be different. I'm just the engineer. So oh, I, don't, I don't deal with all the. No, no, I understand that. I need to know this. Yeah. You got to be kind of that inside chatter going. Yeah, I had a meeting about a month ago and it sounded like they were getting closer. We are, but we are. It's like it would be cheaper to buy them out. But so there was a piece between yeah, well, the might not want to sell. You're talking about well, the people that are on Grove yeah, Street past the club? Trees in it. That, no, they're that right, right, right across the street. Right across the street. There's a bunch of orders. The house has gone out for a fault. conditions now to but provide that plan, right? He's been there right. since the driveway's been yeah. there. I think yeah. so because I think we consolidated two work. different well, orders of conditions. Yeah. That, like, there were multiple for this property. Yeah. So to combine all of the terms. Yeah, the the taco is trying to get is, why are we waiting that, for that nine holes pushed yeah. in with the tile. So that I don't know how the applicant never know goes the real home with a copy of, of the feasible. No, I don't know if they have a plan from the landscape. Keep it a viable nine slash eighteen hole golf course. In that that, that clubhouse is to way too small for it now. Right. It's all that's choppy too, and it's it's and it's it's in the order of conditions. It's kind of a pit. Plus, I, I don't know. That's not part of the pool. Just saying. Just saying. Oh, so many things. It's kind of not that easy to just stick them in there so they wanted to get out at the night. The people at Rock Grove Street, when they were redoing the water lines and the sewer lines here, they come in because their driveway's flooded. So. Does that make? Yeah, a friend of mine was in the chat. Those, yeah, for that. Those, those, those things are in the order of conditions did. that they need to provide that to us. They were mad at the town. Day. Oh, yeah. Aren't exactly. we yeah. essentially Who's approving down by the, the minor plan? The minor changes that are... People up the top of the hill should have that problem. Oh. Yeah. 
But I mean, the thing is, I've, I've gone out there before. You know, one time it was the was my Christmas tree away. It was a frozen lake right there. I mean, that was like a skate rink. It was really dangerous. Um, it was probably the sprinklers don't stop grease fires like that. The town, the, right. the compost dump. You and need foam. Open for that. up like for January eighth or something like that. To spread out the fire. Well, it did rain, and then that whole thing was just. Around. So what we agreed to? It's not that we agreed. Well, we yeah, it was either amended or conditions or minor plans. Yeah, I guess my my thing is I don't see a reason. Funny, well, yeah, I thought that metal work was going to be straightforward, and then it wasn't at all. Give those to us now. Because the, the yeah, you're keeping the building basically where it is now. They need to give that to us. Okay. Okay. And some improvements. Because the, the actual changes took a life of its own. The thing that the is changing has nothing to do with that landscape the plan or is the lighting plan. Tony, Bob? And the changes are Maybe Mario, there's a Tony, too. I deal with it anyway. I was talking to Terry was telling me about, you know, he's been there for exactly. 30 I think whatever this, years. I think that the existing... And, uh, yeah, she had an apron on the day that I was talking about. Sam has lost the order. And, uh, he, he does all the cooking. And he but. said that, you know, yeah, he was kind of crying at the fact that they were... Ready for a joke. If they want to come in again anyway, I was inviting my dog. We can make a bottle. No, the the granite, you know, mortgage the flag monitoring well in. puns. Yeah, this is all gone. All night, all gone. Okay. You should just let it so, rip no, I, because I, it's now no, after. But he was, you know, he was I wanna, very anxious. I don't anxious. mind Jack again. I'm right. worried about so that he, he just seems like, like if I do it too much, he starts to get a little jumpy. So they, they do, you, do you want a joke? Be already. How about this one? They wanted to demo it once the club closed in October. Because they're hiding. Well, essentially. I'm going to get... I think I'm going to wait okay. until after the golf season. Right, so did you get that from no, stupid dad jokes yeah. my kids were <laughs> they still have the, testing uh, on me. The Pro Shack across the first tee? I think so. Yeah, it used to be right in the clubhouse. Yeah. I think Chuck's taking a swing to the What's he doing? Yeah, he, he doesn't want to come think back. He's already I think expired. he ran out of ink for his quill out there. <laughs> he doesn't want to come back because he's already expired. <laughs> no, the thing he is just is left and he's seen how long it takes us to realize. So we'll so sit here for like an hour. Yeah. Well, I gotta go. Can we uh, <laughs> can we do anything to the certificate of compliance? Is that the... No, the, I asked. He doesn't want us to sign my back. Is that, the, is that the, the house on the dead end street that the guy's trying to sell? Great house. Sunset Rock Lane. Yeah. That's Sunset. the turn Sunset. into Woodend. All of the crowd, right? Yeah. Woodend School. Sunset. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's the turn into okay. Woodend. Yep. Do you need to officially work with the continuing exercise? Uh, already in there. Whatever. Yeah. 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 The RDA? The Meadowbrook? So, no, that's continued. We're not. That would be a notice of intent, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, it's an RDA. Yeah. I forgot about that. Because it's so far. No, because the only thing they brought in was the, 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 uh, that was the wet room line. They didn't. You want to see what? I don't know what the most recent stuff is, but this was back from yeah. RDA, and they were, they were just, there was a lot of work, but they were very far away. Yeah. We actually, we actually approved predicated on the plans that they had, we approved the wetland line that we say No, we continued. That rain got, no, didn't we approve the wetland line? That was, yeah, to the, For the RDA? That was, that was in the yeah, south end of the parking lot. And then, uh, and we need an O&M plan changing. for the rain garden. It was a previous right. wetland line. Right. And we checked and then approved, I thought we approved that and then it was something that had to be do with the rain garden that was that's that side of the parking lot. That's what's close to the wetland. Right. And yeah. that's why the, it's a lot of work. Right. But there was something but not about a lot that. Of work near. There was something about that that we couldn't couldn't approve. But we I had there was a lot more missing. work that they had to, well, information parts. they had to come back to us about. No good news. I couldn't find the file. Okay. So I can look it up online. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to do that. What are you looking for? Just the uh, issue date of the 624 of the order of conditions. I'm going to just have it on my Dropbox. Do I have that on my Dropbox? It's a 641. It's a 641. It's a 641. It's a 641. It's a 641, yeah, because I think 624 was the one he uh, he withdrew, and then he came back later on. Right. So it was probably 641. Right. That's probably why I couldn't find it. All right. 
<clears throat> yeah, so if, you, if you're looking things up, look up 641. How long is it good for? Three years. Three years. In those two pieces so, of paper. You want you want us to when you when you come it's in. It's August. You want to ask us to extend it. So when we come in for the, with the to extend another year. So yeah, we're up August seventeenth, two thousand eighteen. So we want to extend. You're allowed one more one year extension. No. You can, you can you do three. You can go on up. So you can go two if you want with us. You can go up to three. That's usually what we do at one time. But there's no limit of how many. <clears throat> Unless you know you're obviously not showing any results, then we would say you know this is it's been too long. Okay. We learned our lesson the hard way on extension. Should we just approve these changes? We should just approve these just procedurally tonight, though. Okay. As is, and we're still waiting for lighting. We're still waiting for our landscape. We have but no nothing in front of us to approve. But there were plans. They sent us plans. There were plans in the packet. Oh well, yeah, they sent you those plans. Yeah. So yeah, if you wanna, I don't think they've just requested to... anything for tonight. So we'll see you at another meeting. I'm just trying to decide how to procedurally. We, we have to submit new plans to CPDC, so we'll just, I'll, we'll put something on letterhead saying we're request, requesting, unless we've been granted a minor plan change. change. That's fine. And, and here's, the, here's the lighting, here's the planting right. Right. plan, That's and fine. go from there with an updated set of plans. We'll tell you after. Okay. We don't need to confuse it. Okay. I'm not confused. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. Night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks for staying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Jack, uh, just literally tell us the network is continuing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, we talked about that when you I were talked about that when oh, okay. You can watch the video. It'll be on YouTube. It's just, hey, look, I told you, you guys can't do anything when you're gone. Certificate compliance for 270-05. 54 lot 206, lot 4931 Sunset Rock Lane. And basically, it's, there was an order of conditions for pervious uh, pavers in the driveway. The, the um, infiltration rate changed and it Required a notice of intent to um, correct or to approve. Is that true? In a they, way. They, they, you know those old locks that they have the, uh, the uh, interlocking. Yeah, kind of they were like octagon. Yeah, and those are the old-fashioned ones, and they were on the, the, the driveway, and they started buckling. Um, there was water getting in, and it started buckling. So he removed that and he put in, uh, it's actually got a, a filtration system below it, but there's other like pavers in it. So uh, at the time, the it, then administrator required a order of conditions and <coughs> additional plantings along the driveway adjacent to the wetland, which I observed. I observed the, um, the pavers that are in and met Mr. Rodriguez. I move we issue a certificate of compliance. I'll second. All those in favor?
get this uh, in time for the April 13th? What? Will they get this in time for the April 13th closing? These people probably got I didn't realize they were closing on the, on the 13th, but... Yeah, that's um, what it says. It says... Uh, says in his letter. It says the schedule of past papers on April 13th. Well, this may be, this may be all they need to, to have, even if it's... That's up to them, Even honestly. if it's a call to check. Well, he'll, probably, he'll come in. Yeah, Master told him that he's preparing this for him. And we'll send he knew we didn't need to come in tonight. Yep. Yeah. And he's going to just come in and pick it up tomorrow. So here's one for... Um, Heinze Street? Yeah, for Heinze, 18 Heinze Street, North Shore Business Solutions. This was um, all those things he wanted to do, mostly landscaping. I have it written down. He's replacing some trees. Um, people that went out there saw that a lot of trees were falling down just because it was just so close to the wetland. And, uh, what is this? So on um, Heinze Street, the applicant submitted a request for determination of applicability to do some work which was to remove shrubs next to the house, remove cherry blossom tree in front of the house, remove shrubs and saplings on the side of the house, and then prune back the left side of some uh, trees, and then remove a small dead tree in the back. Um, and he's gonna add two inches of topsoil to establish a lawn on the back and side of the house. It was voted on last meeting? Yeah. <coughs> this was a long, we actually missed two meetings in between, so it's been it's been a month since we uh, closed. But we could get an issue uh, just to make sure we could get a uh, vote to issue this um, RDA for 2018-2. Anybody feel like they have enough? Mike, were you here? I don't. I'm, I don't know that it was here. I guess I'm. I'm confused. That was this. Was there a negative determination at that last meeting? Yeah. Okay. That's that was my recollection. I mean, that's why it was. Uh, we closed it out. And you don't close a RDA. Well, it wasn't written. What do you do to an RDA? You don't close an issue. No. Oh, right. You just make a negative determination. We have to we, sign the sign determination. Yeah. But we right. signed, so here's we the signed it based on that vote, right? Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So there shouldn't be an, another vote? It was agreed upon at that meeting? Right. I mean, that sounds right, but I don't, I don't think we've done it that way, but that's, that's well, well, fine. So we just had an RDA for Pinevale. And we voted to issue a negative determination. Mm -hmm. And I so now we yeah, vote to sign the negative determination. Did you you voted to issue? Uh, I wasn't paying attention. All right, it's, it's okay. I'm I'm sorry for making it easy. Just pass along something right. to sign. Yeah. 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 If somebody wants to vote on something, go ahead. I mean, <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I'm just confused that it's 18-2 because it says 2017-10. That's the thing. Like whatever. I believe, I believe we voted negative determination on this. We did. Yeah. <laughs> we did. <laughs> I'm going to sign Are it. you asking me you said you don't think you did? No, I think we did on the, the Hensy Street. Yeah. It was the guy that was renovating the house yeah. and already had the trees cut. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he came in twice yeah. saying, do you have it signed yet? Yep. Okay. Right. There's another one. Well, let's see if we can get this one a little bit. <laughs> take a little bit more time on this one. Oh, sorry. I got it now. Here's the determination for the roadways of the engineering department. Um, Pass it. Is this for the town? For the town? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Definitely closed it. No. But I think we might have issued it. I'm sure we did. We if, you're, if you We're drafted it, we used it. I like potholes. Let's not do anything to fix the roads. Oh, this, the potholes. It uh, makes people happy. Station? You, you can keep doing it. So, 
Are we going to do the same thing with Al's project two weeks from now? Yeah. Give Main Street? Like yeah. That's, yeah. Was that supposed to go? Do we hold this hostage so they like do our roads? Usually. In our houses? I'll just get it. What, what, is, is this a standard thing they do, Chuck? Usually an RDA. Yes. Negative. We're and you just roads. pass it around. It's ready for us. Because you know we're going to make, you know that we're going to say it's negative. They're beautiful maps. See, so yeah. Where are you getting that from? Is that's like, what we always do, isn't it? But does that make it right? I mean, that's, I think that's where... I think you can always having make an a motion to having an RDA or a, close an issue. A DOA at the next meeting is never what we do, except for tonight, apparently. Yeah, the new trying, trying to teach some new things. I agree. Do we have any administrators report? Um, can I ask a question? You just sign off on the title thing. Yeah. You already signed off? Well, I was just, yeah, I, I had no problem with it. I, I'm sure it was fine. So, is Al going to get mad if we don't sign here? <laughs> Tonight? Yeah. No, he has to check with engineering. Oh, that, what? that's a condition that we put. That's, that's right. Of it. That's right. Once those three hash that out, get that all worked out, then we'll sign it. Right? I thought we would sign it tonight. What are we sign? Subject to a satisfactory meeting between you, Ryan, and Al. Yeah. I mean, that's like any other condition we put on an RDA. Yeah, we'll sign everything. That's what we said. <laughs> we haven't officially gone into, like, it's the aliens and that little fence in there. Al no just submitted <laughs> that. I don't have it written. Right. We he couldn't sign it. I don't know where you thought we were signing it. I'd have to go back and write it. And, and I think Becky would kill me if I tried to leave this room. We thought that's what you were doing for the last half an hour. <laughs> I know I was gone long enough. Thought, we, <laughs> thought, we, thought, we kind of thought you were making well, it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, hmm, hmm. You usually have it written for us already. Not today. Sometimes. Sometimes. No administrator's report? I have, well, the report has to do with the minor project um, changes. And I did rewrite those again, but I did notice that I left one thing in it where it was like a strike out of uh, new or increased foundation. Strike, so strike, strike out. Uh, but I'd like a vote to approve this. If you want to review it, no more changes except for, um, except for what? Spelling and whatever else. Except the last time. Okay. So. <laughs> There's a, I just had a funny thought. I'm going to put a sign on the floor that says you are here. Oh, that guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That guy is. Uh, Did anyone go to the, uh, the Court of Honor last Saturday? You know, on Monday when I arrived, I, I, I actually had uh, something to do myself, but I was going to give you a call and ask if you went to that. I, just, what is I wasn't in any shape to go. Dave, me, and Al Couliard were invited to uh, one of the Scouts' Court of Honor, which was Saturday. And I intended to go, but you know, having something. Saturday. Oh, get a question for it. There's a gentleman that his daughter plays in the softball league that started a while ago. And he was asking me about a permit. He got some information from you and he's trying to put a pool in. I can't, yeah. remember, can't remember the name of the street, but it's a property that we've talked about several times. Bump ground pool. Bump ground pool, making it smaller. Some. He's talked to me? He says he got something from you that kind of confused the issue. He sent me an email, which I couldn't find because I wanted to talk to you about it before tonight because I don't know what he's expecting me to do for him. But I, I think he might just be trying to 
know what you can do for them? Work away around the system. You can vote for this minor plan change because we're <laughs> reducing where you can put a um, above ground pool above from ground. 50 feet away to 35 feet away. What I should do or he should do? Well, that's what you can do for him. Oh, I was going to say what... If I'm, he's having an issue putting in an above ground pool, the regulations used I, to be 50 already, feet away. I already voted for these changes, didn't and, I? Yeah. So then there you go. And then now we're down to 35 feet away. Do you remember if it was in? It wasn't within 25 feet. No, it was within 30. I don't know who we're oh, talking I'm about. sorry. Oh, I thought you said yes. I thought you said, when I asked you something about a pool this past couple of weeks, I thought you said yes. I wouldn't expect you to have. You were impressing me. I had the lady on uh, 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 Pinevale ask me about a pool. East, East And there was one guy that wanted a pool, and we just couldn't get it 35 feet away. Um, and that was maybe a couple of years back. No, no, this was like a couple of weeks ago. I, I, I couldn't find his email. I, I saw it, I read it, and I don't know what the hell I did on the thing. Wasn't that recently? Yeah. Yeah, this guy was... Uh, 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 yeah, for some way, Eastway sounds familiar to me. <laughs> I thought he said, but it can't be that same property. I remember some guy coming here. in, and, and he just and he wanted to talk to us, and he tried to, like, jury-rig it in, and he, and he couldn't... I thought we did. I thought it was. Yeah, that was like, the guy who had the deck issue and it was too close to his house. Yes, and had the, had, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he was going to make the pool like 600 square feet or something. It was going to be an odd shaped pool right? just to yeah. come yeah. up a deck. I remember that. But I, I, for some reason, I don't think it was the same guy, but it might, might it very well may have been. I don't have any changes. I think um, when someone puts in a foundation, it's okay. no matter where it is, it, that's a big project, and we, we, our policy has been to ask for more content. So if that was sauna tubes, it would be different. But that's a, this is not permitted by this procedure. Right? No, I don't, I'm just reading New York Peace Foundations. Um, Taking it out makes me infer that you mean that no, it is then, approved. Yeah. It is. It is approvable. All right, so leave that in? I, I, I think so. Well, let's get a call on it right yes, now. Yes, leave it in. Chuck, Chuck was, um, leave one in. No uh, or increase Number 4A. 4A. New or increased foundation. Why, why did we say we were going to take that out, though? Because it's saying uh, these are not permitted. It says uh, in the buffer zone projects that are not permitted by this procedure. I mean, we shouldn't necessarily need it, but because it should be self-evident. But mm -hmm. I, 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 we, one of the things that I asked you was about the uh, the sheds. Well, can we answer Under. that question first? He's trying to get. The I thought we did answer. So we're gonna cross it out. Or not. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it in. I'm gonna leave it in. Okay. Yeah. Left in. Reason that. Okay. I'm sorry, Dave. Oh, so that it's not not permitted. Correct. New Orleans. Permitted. Okay. Um, was the I had asked you about the, and you were gonna check with Glenn about the 15 feet by 15 foot, um, freestanding sheds. That I asked you to say just 225 square feet. Um, to remove the restriction of the length versus width. You just come up with square footage. Mm -hmm. Where's right. that written? I must in here somewhere. It's on, uh, oh. uh, it's on uh, 3E. It's a yeah. first, uh, first on the top, on the back page. That it was. Line, uh, and you were going to check with Glenn to see if there was a reason why it was 15 by 15, or uh, could it be just sheds, 225 square feet? Yeah, because it doesn't give any dimensions for it. Porch. I think right. I think if we change it to 225, it's not going to be a problem. I'll okay. tell you my answer off of. One of the other things about this, Chuck, do you have something on this which is probably helpful just for people coming in to see you? Will you put under um, under the conditions under uh, to be a complete written description of all the work and protective or mitigated measures and an accurate sketch of plan must be submitted to the conservation administrator. Do you have something that has some you know, like a, for instance, of what 
um, the de written description of the of the work in protective of the mitigative measures. You know, as for someone that is coming from the big public that doesn't know anything about wetlands, wetlands protection, or anything like that, may not know anything about what you're trying to get at there um, as to what they should provide to you in applying for a mine project. True, but every 100% of them call me. Okay. And usually I work on their uh, map geo plan, dropping in where their shed's going and putting okay. the setbacks in it and, you know, whatever I need to. So the, that, a lot of these things are just, you know, uh, here's a description, here's an example of a description, you know, verbally. Yep. And um, look up the map and lot number yep. and tell them, you know, we, we actually look through the old building jackets for some sort of stamped site plan. They yep. can use that. They can just pencil in. So we, we try to do our best. This is, this is, I, I think this is supposed to be, you, kind of, you know, taking a left with turn. the helping hand of the conservation. You're taking a left turn completely about what I asked you about. I'm not talking specifically about the protective and mitigating mitigative measures. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about like the sketch or a I'm description to tell you, of what people call. are doing. Okay. I'm usually standing in front of someone. It's something like that just generates a call. Okay. When they don't understand it, no one just says, "Well, let's ponder this for a while and <laughs> wait, think about it." And while well, the sale goes on their shed. I, if you have something, you want me to change it to something or have an example? No, no. I'm just I asking can... you if you have something, if this is going to be a mechanism that people use, that that would be something that might be easier for JQ Public to understand. I actually think that's more than that I get from anyone. Okay. And, uh, but it's, I'm glad it's in there because when they are very close, I would ask them for mitigation measure, right. measures. They might say, well, what's that? All right. Um, what else? Madam Chair. I make a doing? motion to approve as amended. Thank you. Second. Second. All those in favor? Billy Billy. Did you, you hear that you couldn't say that at the Masters? Yeah. It throw you out? Say what? Couldn't say dilly dilly at the Masters tournament, golf tournament, to throw you out. Why? Oh, because well, people were yelling at people, yeah. people got crazy, got Bud Light signed yelling. Billy right. dilly when people wouldn't sign or, or hit a nice drive. It's just because it's it's become one of those things that's gone through the country like wildfire. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. dilly. Ever see the butt ad with the with the, with the sorcerer who's answering the king's wishes? Oh. And he says, but, but sire, I can help you conquer countries. And he goes, Nah, turn that lamp into a case of bud. It's it's a stupid ad. It's kind of funny actually. Chuck, do we have minutes like for what, February fourteenth? Uh, no. You ever see it? <laughs> From years ago. Just ask. Probably Rebecca yeah, doesn't watch the same TV. <laughs> You don't, oh, you, don't, you don't watch TV? But do you know why they were doing that? Yeah. They were, they trying, to, they were trying to control <laughs> their own advertisement. Because that's, yeah. Who precipitated that, bud? I think, I think, uh, I don't even know, the Masters group. They well, just say, yeah, because yeah. The official beer of they, the Masters. You can't have the beer. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Official beer. Official beer. Well, if you're going to have an advertisement, you're going to pay yeah. for it. Oh, have that's where it came from. I'll tell you a story that I'll you second. may not appreciate. Right. Uh, uh, I, do we have any emergency permits, bills to approve? No, 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 and okay. no. I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Meeting is here, here. adjourned. Second. Yeah. Oh, all those in favor? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there was a lady.